Hello teachers, learners, and parents. Sir Jeff po at your service. Alam nyo ba na meron tayong website na tinatawag na DepEd Commons? Ang DepEd Commons ay binuo upang gawing accessible ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral dito sa ating bansa gamit lamang ang inyong mga smart devices gaya ng cellphones, tablets, at computers. Dito ay maaari nating ma-access ang iba't ibang learning materials mula sa Department of Education. Meron itong mga interactive materials, electronic self-learning modules, at instructional video lessons mula sa DepEd TV na tiyak na makatutulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral galing ka man sa public o private school. Walang problema! Dahil welcome ang lahat dito. Para ito sa mga guro, magulang at mga mag-aaral mula sa kinder hanggang grade 12, alternative learning system o ALS, at pati na rin ang special education. At huwag kang mag-alala dahil kahit walang load ay maaari mong ma-access ang mga learning materials. Tama! Libre ito! Ang kailangan mo lamang gawin ay i-on ang iyong data at buksan lamang ang iyong browser at i-type ang commons.deped.gov.ph Alam na ba ng iyong mga kasamahang guro o mag-aral ang tungkol sa DepEd Commons? I-share mo na ang video na ito upang matuto rin sila kung paano gagamitin ang DepEd Commons sa mabilis at napakadaling paraan. Muli! Ito po si Sir Jeff at kita-kits po tayo sa DepEd Commons. Paalam! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Hi, hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, grade 6 learners from different parts of the Philippines. So as our dear parents and guardians and teachers who are watching with us here in this very time sa ating grade 6 session in Itulay. Good afternoon. Tingnan nga natin kung sino yung um, kasama natin this, this afternoon. Uh, watching from Alangalang Night High School. Lady Division, good afternoon, Salvation Time. So as um, Maribel Lobo de la Ria from Division of Angeles City, good afternoon everyone. Nakakatawa, we're so many this time. Okay, and welcome back. I'm your English buddy this afternoon, Teacher Jazz. And I am just so excited because we already finished our last topic. Nung nakaraang linggo. So, we're gonna have our new topic this 40 minute session in English. Okay, so without um, much more intro, simula na natin. Okay, with a short prayer. We thank you, Lord, for this very hour. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we will be learning again this time. We, we are asking for your knowledge, for your wisdom, so that we'll, we will be able to learn uh, this afternoon. This we ask, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, and, okay, so before we start, let me share my screen to you first. A moment. Okay, I hope everyone can see my screen now. Watching here from Bohol Division. Good afternoon, Anisida Ganade. So as Hides Castillo, Castillo CM from DCS Manila. 
Okay, General Trias also. Good afternoon. Tingnan ko nga kung sino yung ano yung first uh, comer natin. Sino yung ating masyadong maaga? Ah, good afternoon, Beth Macbuds Reyes. Hi, Josephine and Mon Brits. Okay, so, okay, grade 6, my grade 6 English warriors okay i hope that your activity notebook is now ready okay and i am looking for you i'm looking forward to your participation as we continue with our discussion okay so let's have this one okay so this okay this afternoon we're going to uh we're going to study on how to relate an experience appropriate to the occasion okay but before that okay let's have our pretest first for me to know how well or how knowledgeable you are okay about our topic this time all right so mamayang pagsagot ninyo doon sa comment box okay so you drop your answers in there and i'm going to read that as much as i can Okay, so for your direction or for our direction, okay, write true if the statement is correct and false if it isn't. Okay, let's start with the number one. Okay, tina natin. Wow, we're so many today. Okay, so direction write true if the statement is correct and false if not. Number one, what it says here. Most people who fall sick with COVID with COVID nineteen will experience mild to moderate symptoms. Is that true or false? Drop your answers here. Oh yes, hi Rebecca Pitogo. Good afternoon. Okay, you're present. Watching from Elokusur, Charlotte Kapakap. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, let's answer now. Okay, so Akisha Ariola, that is true. Very good. Chino Samonte, that's right. Next, okay, let's have number two now. Oh, let me highlight it. How about for number two? You read it aloud. As I read it aloud in here, you read it aloud also in your place, okay? Number two. Some common symptoms of coronavirus are fever. Dry cough and tiredness. True or false? Marika Alasso, Alrisa Zaidane, and Arkisha Ariola. Okay, so your answers are all true. That's correct. Next. Okay, next number three. Okay, a moment. At naririnig ko ang boses ko. Okay, so number three, a person will not be infected of the disease if he or she will not be exposed to people suffering from it. Ah, yes, learners, my grade six learners, lagyan ninyo ng number yung sagot ninyo. Let's say number three, it is true or false. Okay, number two, so that I'll know. Okay, so number three now, what is your answer for number three? A person will not be infected of the disease if that person is will if that person will not be exposed to people suffering from it three is okay alriza zaidane chino jaime samonte and akisha Ariola. okay very good our answer here is true good next how about four number four number four Staying home and observing proper hygiene will help you or will help one person avoid virus. Number four. Number four. Lagyan. Lagyan ng ano ng number. Okay. Luz. Okay. Alriza. Four. Akisha. Bay. Beya. Andong. Grace. Santa Maria. Chino. Oh. What is that? Why is it? Bakit mayang torture? Okay, Chino, true. Okay, so number four natin ay true pa din. Okay, that's right. And the last number, everyone. Okay, for our retest, last number. Coronavirus is an airborne type of disease. Is it an airborne type of disease? Is COVID-19 an airborne type of disease? Your answer drop there. Five. Alriza Zaidane, number five, false. Who else? Kylie Gwyneth Salgado, number five, false. Alriza, false also. Okay, Leo Gallego Trevilias, false. Okay, and 
What's the wine? Gina Aborot Falls. Okay, tama. Number five natin ang sagot ay falls. Okay, so one to four natin ang sagot ay true. And then, yung number five natin ay falls. Nakakatawa, mukhang very easy lang yung topic natin this afternoon as most of you really made it. I mean, get the correct answers. Okay, so let's have this one now. Okay, for our recap, the last time... Uh, Last Tuesday, we did talk about the sources of information, and we have classified those as sources of information into three. I have in here, okay? We have the print, the broadcast, and the online. This time around, isa lang, okay? You give me one example for each, okay? Can you give me example of print materials? Yes, hello. Oh, ha oh a moment. Okay. Hi, Riz Dale Plana. Good afternoon. You're watching with me? Okay, good afternoon. Okay, sources of information. Give me example of print materials. Go. Magazine Chino Samonte. That's right. La Crane de, Gra de Gras, that newspaper. That's also correct. Okay, very good. How about for broadcast? Give me example of broadcast material or materials. Okay, broadcast materials. Broadcast na tayo, tapos na tayo sa print. Give me an example of broadcast materials. This one is transmitted, okay, through television or radio. Okay, TV what? TV commercials? Could it be? TV commercials. Uh, TV program. Ah, could it be? Yeah, Facebook. Okay, Facebook. TikTok. TikTok. Weather forecast and documentaries and a lot more. Okay, great. This time around, sa online na tayo. Okay, so give me an example of online materials. Go. I, I mean, ala I'm sorry. Okay, a while ago I said, okay, TikTok. Okay, and Facebook. Okay. That's okay. That's wrong, wrong. I'm thinking about online. Okay. Yung TikTok at yung Facebook nasa online yun. <laughs> okay. So, broadcast tayo. Yun yung mga materials na, um, na transmitted to the public through the use of radio and television. Okay. E yung mga weather forecast, documentaries, news. Okay. Yun yung, yun yung broadcast. Okay. And online na tayo. Online, online. I'm looking in here. Na, na wala ako. Okay, online na tayo. Go ahead, everyone. Online. Mm, that is right. Okay, online here, we have Facebook. As, asan pa? Mobile apps. Okay, that's right. Mm, ano yan? Okay, vlogs. Okay, and dito na yung TikTok. Right? And... Twitter, Instagram, correct. The YouTube videos, vlogs. Okay, WeChat, Viber, those are examples of online. Very nice. Okay, so again, okay, print materials, uh, broadcast materials, and online materials. These are the different sources of information. Okay, but we did talk about this one last Tuesday. Okay, and let's have this one now. Okay, very nice. Okay, naalala nyo pa yun. Okay, let's have this one. Meron ako ditong set of two, four, six, seven, seven words. Okay, I have here seven words. I don't know if you, uh, if you're familiar with this. Okay, so you can see in there. Okay, grade six learners, are you familiar with the words that I have here in this on the screen? Okay, could it be the acronyms or the words? Okay, now. I want you to read them aloud. Can you read them aloud? Okay, sige. Basahin nyo ng malakas dyan sa place ninyo. I'm going to give you time. Okay, time's okay, time's up. All right, so we have COVID-19, pandemic, social distancing, ECQ, Lockdown, travel pass, and frontliners. Okay, I believe that you are also okay familiar with these words. Okay, now, how do you feel whenever you hear these words? Do you feel sad? 
or maybe disappointed or happy how do you feel when you hear these words how do you feel okay this is all about covid19 or pandemic from beya okay so for alriza zaidane zaidane you felt worried okay you felt worried oh yes hello po ma'am jazz hi ethan jefferson bakay okay you you feel um scared or afraid chino and hizikaya and akisha you feel sad why sige nga bigyan niyo ako ng one one um one sentence lang for why why do you feel that way yes yeah, sad and disappointed for beya and dong okay oh why are you why you're happy ethan when you hear these words okay that i have here okay a moment here okay so ano yung nararamdaman ninyo sabi ninyo kanina you're happy i mean you're sad you're worried okay why is it because is it because hindi kayo makalabas Oh, it's because this can kill. What's this one from Chino Jaime Samonte? This can kill people. Oh, tama naman because of the virus. Okay, because we might we might get infected of the virus from Beya and Dong. That's right. You feel sad, Lotsky? Why? Okay, yeah. Okay, this one is the this one is dangerous because it can. What is it? One? Okay. Kill people. Okay. Same with, uh, sino yung nagsabi nun kanina? Ah, si Chino then. Okay. So, that's it. So, in here, okay, I have here a text. Okay. A short text. Okay. An article, an article retrieved from researchgate dot net okay and let's read it together okay i just want i want you to not just read it but please understand because you are going to answer some questions later okay so sabayan ninyo ako all right so you read aloud okay you read aloud let's ha let's have this one COVID-19 or coronavirus has affected day-to-day -day life and is slowing down the global economy. This pandemic has affected thousands of people who are either sick or have died due to the, due to the spread of this disease. This is a new viral disease affecting humans for the first time. Thus, vaccines are not yet available. Ah, because um, this article was last year pa. Okay, so vaccines are not available. This virus, okay, is spreading exponentially region-wise. Countries are banning gatherings of people to avoid the spread of virus and break the exponential curve. Many countries are locking their population and enforcing strict quarantine to control the spread of this highly communicable disease. COVID-19 has rapidly affected our day-to-day -day life, such as our health, our social and economy businesses disrupted the world trade and movements. This virus creates significant knock-on effects on the daily life of citizens as well as the global economy. Okay. So that short article was about, okay, hi, Kimer Kalida from Paterno, uh, Ped, from 10, Pedro Paterno from Mangahan High School, watching from Hassan Misamis Oriental, hi, Andy Madrelejos, and watching from Dato Mantawil Elementary School, Gabaca North Division of Cotabato. Good afternoon, everyone. Going back to the article that we read a while ago. Okay, the article was about what? Mm -hmm. Okay, the article was about the, okay, let's have this one. What, okay, the article was about the COVID-19. And let's answer this, okay, this first question. What is the meaning of COVID-19? What is the meaning of COVID-19? Drop your answers again there. What's the meaning of COVID-19? Uh huh. Okay, Akisha Ariola, coronavirus. Okay. Uh, 
Kian Andre Vinluan, yeah, what, that's COVID-19. My question is, what's the meaning of the COVID-19? Akisha, Akisha, coronavirus, who else? Alriza Zaidani, coronavirus, so as Gemma, coronavirus, Eliza, okay. Oh, yes, hi, hi, Vien, Fahi, Lagutan, Vinluan, watching from Manggahan High School, good afternoon po. Okay, Kylie Gwyneth, a Salgado coronavirus. And if your answer really is coronavirus, then that's correct. COVID-19 means coronavirus. Okay, next. Number two na po tayo. Number two. How about this question? Does this affect many people? If your answer is yes, how? How does it affect many people? How does COVID-19 affect so many people? Okay, and dami. All right. Okay. How does this COVID nineteen affect? Okay, affect many people. Sige nga, drop your answers again there. Babasahin ko. Mm hmm. Okay. Many people. Many people died. Sabi niyo kanina, it can kill people. That's right, naman. Okay. Many people died because of this, right? What else? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, Beya, okay, Beya and Dong, thousands of people died because of coronavirus, that's right. Okay, ano pa, how, did it, how does this affect the lives of many people, especially Filipino people? Oh, very good, Catherine Celestra, okay, some people lose their jobs. Okay, yeah, they lost their jobs, okay, they have lost their jobs because of this coronavirus okay what else okay keisha to stone good afternoon watching now from san lorenzo ruiz elementary school grade six mabine okay so as okay gwyneth salgado okay because okay lotski bugao they do not have followed health uh-huh okay come on more oh it affects also your studies our studies okay kasi Hindi na tayo, hindi na tayo nakapasok ng school, no? Like, we're not facing, we're not, uh, we're not reporting to school face-to-face. -face. What we're doing right now is just online, okay? Online classes, it also affects our, okay, our studies. Okay, very nice, okay? Nakakatawa. Alright, so those, okay, those answers of yours were all correct, okay? Not only, um, not only... Not only many people died because of that, because of this disease, and not only, um... A lot of people are still suffering, okay, because of this, um, of this, okay. Uh, many people suffering in the hospital because of this coronavirus, but also it slowed down, okay, it slowed down our economy, okay. So, sabi nyo doon kanina, um, yun, tama yun, Alriza Zaidan, it affect our economy, that's right, okay. Tapos ano pa, economy, it can kill people, all right. Okay, yung pag-aaral ninyo na naapektuhan din. That's how that's how that coronavirus works. So imagine. Okay, now let's have number 3. Can you name countries? Okay, name countries that were also locked down. Okay, that were also in lockdown before, like the Philippines. May may countries ba kayong alam na nag-lockdown din before, just like what we had okay also before then. Like Hello, watching. Okay, watching students of Mambusao National High School. Good afternoon. Alriza Zaidani, we have China, USA. Okay, tama po iyon. Okay, some, okay, some of countries. Katulad ng Italy, China, USA, Malaysia, Hong Kong, and a lot more. Spain, India, okay, and other parts of the world. Okay, very nice. Okay, can you raise your right hand? Okay, raise your right hand, everyone, and, okay, itop nyo yung shoulder nyo, you say, good job. Okay, good job for, part for participating well, okay, sa ating activity. All right, so, okay, so let's have, okay, let's have this one. Okay, let's have this one. Okay, for our guided practice, okay, let's try this as practice exercise. Answer yes if you can relate with the activity in your community. 
and no if not you have to answer yes or no in there kung nakaka-relate ba with the activity in your community or not let's have this uh okay but before that okay let's have this one okay uh and dami nating ano dami nitong uh, messages here Okay, Lurlen, Zeta Pagayon, good afternoon, watching from Mangahan High School. Hi, good afternoon. Milet said, yun, thank you po sa wakas, hindi mo kalang nasa screen. Nasa screen na din ang mga tanong o akalin. Ah, yes, of course. Okay, so let's have this one. The situation that we are in right now, okay, is really... Okay, it's really saddening. Nakakalungkot, ano? It breaks our hearts, okay? Um... Ano pa, ang dami na walang trabaho, so it's really saddening, no? So, we could no longer do the normal things that we do. We could no longer do the things that we used to do. You cannot go to school, you cannot play with your friends outside, you, not, you cannot go to the market, you cannot go to the mall, and that's very different, okay? But um, I believe every one of us, okay, everyone, every one of us affects, um, everyone not only affects ano but it everyone really suffered because of this okay everyone suffered because of this but i believe that okay meron din namang ano positive thing okay in spite of this negative negative na nangyayari all right so sabi niyo kanina yung pag-aaral ninyo na naapektuhan that's right because schooling was interrupted last um uh, last year tama po so a lot of us cannot go go outside, cannot celebrate birthdays, salabas, cannot eat out with a family, or you cannot visit friends, kasi bawal, right? Okay, so you answer nyo doon sa part na ito, in here. Okay, so you answer nyo sa part na yan. Okay, ay parte yun na experience ni experiences ninyo or kakanasan ninyo okay, in this present situation that we have, that we are in, in this pandemic. So you cannot share. So in here, you cannot share, okay, one, if you don't know anything about an occasion or event happening around you, right? So again, you, your answers, okay, are part of your experiences in this present situation. You cannot, you cannot share one if you don't know anything about an event happening around you. Okay, so let's have this one for our guided practice. Let's have number one. Ano yung sasagot ninyo dito? Yes or no. Okay, yes or no. Number one. Washing and sanitizing of hands frequently. Washing and sanitizing of hands frequently. Is it yes or no? Lagyan nyo ulit na ano, alang number one and then your answer. Okay, yes. Very good. Althea, Barangan, one yes. Bea, yes. Kian, yes. Okay, that's right. Okay, Lacrin Degras, yes. Okay, if your answer is yes, okay, then you are correct. So, it is important why, I mean, ano tong, ano, washing and sanitizing of hands frequently. It is important to for us to wash our hands, okay, most of the time, especially ngayon, okay, to keep ourselves safe, okay, safe from viruses. That's how, that's why we do that, okay, frequently, okay, frequently. Next, number two. How about this number two? Very nice. And dami sagot. Okay, watching from Bulacan. Hi, Christina. Kasiko. Ah, Kaskio. Is that right? Kaskio. Okay, number two. Here. Practicing social distancing. Is it yes or no? Number two, Eliza Soriano. Number two is yes. Um, Gemma Pagal. Eliza Akisha Ariola, Nathaniel Bustilios, Ed Daniel Vertusho. Yes, that's correct. Okay, if your answer here is yes, then that's again right. Okay, this one could be of great help, okay, in combating the spread of COVID-19. Okay, we have up until ano, up until now, we should always observe this. We should always observe practice, I mean social distancing. Okay, wag yung tabi tabi. Okay, especially when you guys are going outside. Okay, so let's have this one. Number three. Okay, number three. Wearing face masks. Wearing face mask. Okay, nagma mask ba kayo pag lumalabas kayo? Okay, three. Yes or no? 
Number three is yes or no. Christina Casquillo, Paula Angela Tuazon, um, Nimre Abasola, Paula Hipolito. Okay, number three, yes. Okay, tama po yun. All right, so your answer is yes again, and that's right. Okay, this this also this could also help us from being infected. Okay, so when you go outside, always wear a mask. Okay, so how about for number four? Okay, number four. Okay, ito. Selling. Okay, selling of homemade goodies and essential products online. Okay, number four. How about itong number four? Mm -hmm. How about for number four? Selling of homemade goodies and essential products online. Okay, number four, Eliza, Lacrane, Paula, Kurt, yes, okay, and, okay, yes. Sabi nyo kasi kanina, di ba, parang because of this um coronavirus, it slows down our economy and through this, we can also help, okay? So, our economy is affected, so many stores are closed, and we are not allowed to go outside, and through this, like online selling, oh, it's, it's online selling, right? Okay, online selling help people, okay, help family earn money for a living. Okay, so we can do this one. Okay, we can do this. Kasi makaming nawalan ng trabaho. So, pwede naman itong gawin. Okay, so online selling. Okay, uh, sell goodies or foods or essential products online. Okay, next, the last number is number five. Okay, how about for number five? Okay, number five, going outside without a travel without a travel or permission to leave pass or ID. Number five. Uh huh. Okay, number five. Okay, yes, all right, so let's have this one. Marianne Luis de Leon, no, Akisha K. Lopez, Kylie, Kylie Gwyneth, Catherine Celestra, Eds, Ethan, Justine Alahad, Alriza Kian, Andre Vinluan, Paula Tuazon. Okay, it's no. Okay, so going outside without a travel pass or, or ID or permission to leave pass or ID, okay, is no. Okay, so no, everybody should see to it that okay we abide by the law being imposed in our uh, in our place okay in our community as this will not put you okay and other people at risk okay we have to abide the law about this okay called COVID nineteen. Sabi nga ano to um safety health. Okay, protocol. We have to abide. Okay, so, very nice. Kanina, taka ng kamay yung tinaas natin, no? Ngayon naman, kaliwang kamay. Okay, kaliwang kamay, taas. And, okay, good job, self. Okay, thank you so much for participating. So, well, my grade 6 players. Okay, next. Okay, for activity 1. Okay, for activity 1, put a check. Ah, paano kayo isulat, no? At, at tama, check yung parang kahit slash na lang dyan, pag-comment, and then the X. Okay, Be before each number, if you can do the activity during this pandemic and okay check now if you can do that activity na ibibigay ko later during the pandemic okay mag comment kayo ng check or you can write check pag mayon kayo activity notebook sa english okay and x mark okay pag hindi ito nagagawa during pandemic are you ready okay so pag ready na let's do it okay number one we still have four minutes left to go okay number one Okay, tan ta da -da Cook your favorite food with your mom. Do you guys do it at home during pandemic? Okay, here, number one. Sino ang gumagawa neto during pandemic? Nagagawa niyo ba iyan during pandemic? You can do, do that during um during pandemic. Okay, so Paula, Chino, Justine, Gion, Eliza, Soriano, Kurt. Bea, Ethan, check, check, check. Okay, that is check. Good. You can do this, okay, at home. And number two, watch a movie with your friends. Nagagawa niyo ba yung number two during pandemic? Do you guys can watch movie with your friends? Number two. 
Okay. Number two, watch a movie with your friends. Ah, ah ito mayroong ano, ito combination of psych and wrong. Okay. Ah, uh, I'll read up. Ano yung gagawa ito? Di ba your friends are living, your friends are living maybe far from your place. You cannot go outside. You cannot travel. Okay. Pag, uh, during the pandemic. But how can you watch movie with your friends? Okay, like together. Okay, you cannot do this one. Like watching movie with your friends together as we are not allowed to go outside during pandemic, isn't it? Okay, yeah. Number two is, uh, it's wrong. Okay, how about for number three? Okay, number three. Stay home with the family. Okay, ito yung activity na to. Nag nagawa nyo ba during the pandemic? Okay, stay home with the family. Yes. Of course, Ethan, Eliza, Gion, Alriza, Akisha, Kurt, Kenry, Lacrane. Tama po. Okay, this is check. Okay, we can do this. Kasi nag stay lang naman tayo sa home all throughout the pandemic, right? We don't have any choice. How about for number four? Number four, go on a vacation in one of the tourist spots in the Philippines. Number four. Number four, drop your answers. Number four. Okay, so number four. Okay, X, Lacrain, Kirk, Henry, X, 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 Justine, Christina, uh, Robert, Andre, Bagasbas, Kian, Andre, Vinluan. Check, Kian. Can you go on a vacation, Kian? Okay, Ethan, that wrong. Okay. Yes, Nimre, Abasola, wrong. Akisha. Yes, number four, we cannot go outside. We cannot travel. We cannot travel. Okay, in any, actually, um, in many of beautiful places in the Philippines during the pandemic, we're not allowed to. Okay, so for number four, we cannot do that. Five, last number. Okay, receive a gift from a relative online. Can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? Okay, number five, five. Okay, Catherine Celestra. Okay, check. Keisha Toston, check. Akisha Ariola, check. Okay, number five, of course we can. Okay, kasi online lang naman ito. Okay, so we can receive a gift from a relative online kasi hindi naman, hindi naman yung face-to-face. -face. This is online. Okay, and since our time, our 40 minutes is already over, we're going to continue our last, our activities, the remaining, rather, the remaining activities next Tuesday at the same time, 1 p.m. to 1.40 p.m., okay? So, thank you so much for being with me, okay, and for participating so well, okay, during our grade 6 English session. Okay, everyone, you all did so great. We'll see you then next week. Bye for now now and stay safe learners. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay e tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Ito Live free online tutorial session sa Filipino. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Ito Live tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippine social media accounts. Paalam! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po, at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua.
Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Hello po nga. Nakamute po. Ayan. Okay again, welcome to the Itulay online tutorial for our grade 7. Okay, so now here is my screen. Let me just adjust it for you. Okay, so once again, I am Tutor Drazel from Mangahan High School from the Division of Pasig City. And let me guide you in today's online tutorial or our lesson for our grade 7 students out there. So today we're going to discuss um, English 7. And this will be for linear and non-linear texts. And this is the continuation of our lesson last time. And this will be session so before we start, let us first check who are now present on our Facebook Live. Let me check. So there we have Miss Lina Pilar Juarez. Good afternoon also. And we also have some uh, people watching from Al Almendras Elementary School. So thank you for watching. And I hope you will be learning in today's lesson. So before we start, let us first be guided by the goals of our tutorial lesson for today. So we have two important targets for this lesson. The first one is to identify the various types and examples of linear and non-linear text. And of course, number two, you will also be learning to transcode linear to non-linear texts and vice versa. So now let us begin our class with a short review. It's time for a review. What did we learn last time? So let's check how well we understood last week's lesson and also about linear and non-linear text. So the instruction is identify whether the following items are linear or non-linear. We will be using our comment box on the Facebook. So you're going to write L for linear and NL for non-linear. So we're going to have this one by one. So again, please use the comment box for our Facebook Live. So I will know your answers and we can check whether it's correct. I mean, if it's correct, excuse me, or it's incorrect. Okay, let us start. The first one is the New Oxford Dictionary. Okay, what is this? Is it an L or an NL? Okay. I'll, I'll post everything first, and then we'll discuss the answers later. Number two, Trees by Joyce Kilmer. Number three, The Distribution of OFWs by Place of Work. We have the pie graph there on the picture. Number four, How about Romeo and Juliet, the novel by, I mean the play by William Shakespeare. Then we also have the sports news page, number five. Number six, we also have the Venn diagram. Number seven, we have a line graph. Number eight, we have the novel by our very own Dr. Jose Rizal, Noli Metangere. Number nine, we have an example here of a flow chart. And number 10, it's Ibong Adarna book. Okay. 
Okay, I'm giving you a little time to think about your answers and then we can check in a few seconds. Okay, just post, post your answers there. Just put the number of course so we can check whether you have answered it really, really right. Ready? Okay, let's discuss what is your answer for number one. Okay, we have here from Chino, hi, Mesa Monte. Your answer is uh, linear L. Also from John Lawrence Naig. And we have Jennifer Filarca Cruz, also with an L. What is the correct answer for number one? It's correct. It's an L. It's linear. Number two, we have Trees by Joyce Kilmer. What is your answer for number two? Post your answers, please. Okay. So the answer for number two is, okay, it is L also. It's linear, correct. How about number three? Okay. Write the answers. Number three, the pie graph for the distribution of OFWs by place of work. The correct answer is, yes, number three, it's NL. Very good. John Lawrence Nae. Very good. Next, number four, Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. What is the answer? Is it L or NL? Number four. Don't forget to write the number. Okay, number four is L also. Very good. How about number five? It's a sports news page. What is the answer for number five? Come on, number five. Okay, the correct answer is letter L, linear. Next, number six, Venn diagram. What is the answer for Venn diagram? That is number six. Okay, that is an NL, nonlinear. Okay, next, number seven, line graph. That is, okay, number seven, correct, it's a... NL, very good people. Now let's have number eight. Dolly Mitangre by Dr. Jose Rizal. That is okay, good. That's an L. It's linear because it's a novel. Next, number nine, flow chart. Okay, for number nine, we have good NL, non-linear. And then the last one for our review, let's have the Ibong Adarna book. That is, okay, number 10, the Ibong Adarna is an example of a, what? Okay, very good. It's L for linear. Very good, people. If you got it all correctly. Okay, so if those who got a perfect score in our activity, please comment a heart. Okay, please write a heart on our comment box so I will know whether you are really understanding everything. Okay, heart, 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 please. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. There are hearts there on our comment box now, meaning to say you are understanding our past lesson. So for those who got a heart and those who got a perfect score, I am saying congratulations, everyone. And for those who have committed mistakes, don't worry. We still have some more activities so you can do better on the next activities, okay? So let's move on to our next activity. So we will now be discussing linear and nonlinear text. This is session two, okay? So first, let us again uh, proceed to our lesson. So let's have a quick look. Uh, look back on the important points that were discussed last week. So again, that will be about linear and non-linear. So we actually differentiated linear and non-linear that time. So we will just be going back a little. Okay, it's like going back to memory lane. So we will know the definition, comparison, and contrast between these two types of texts. First, let's discuss linear Okay, so linear, a linear text refers to traditional text that needs to be read from beginning to end in order to make sense of its content. Okay, it follows a sequential reading path where the reader tries to make sense of the text through grammatical arrangement and relationship of words. 
For the examples for linear, we have the following. We have novels, poems, short stories. We have letters and we have educational texts. And then the other type, of course, is nonlinear. And it is defined as a nonlinear text is non-sequential. This means that the readers, not the author, decide how the text is to be read without necessarily following a prescribed pattern. Okay, so some examples for nonlinear we have flowcharts, graphs, charts, and of course we have graphic organizers. So let us proceed now. Can you give me some uh, some more specific examples for nonlinear texts? They kindly comment your answers there. What are some more specific examples for nonlinear texts? Okay, so let's have um, some greetings here first. First, we have watching from Sibaleo Elementary School from Dep Edbanga Division of Aklan. Now that's very far. Miss Memelin Villanueva, hi there from our, uh, to all those in Aklan. And then we also have um, from Bukal National Integrated School, and we also have somebody here, John Lawrence Knight from Kidapawan. Okay, so we are being watched the whole of Philippines. So now let's proceed. What are your examples? Come on, kindly post them on your uh, on our comment box. So I'm having trouble here. So again, let's have Giancarlo Angon Gonzalez. Very good. Pie graph is an example of a non-linear text. Very good, Gian. Next. So it's coding linear, of course, if we already know linear and nonlinear text, we also have to know how to transcode linear to nonlinear text and vice versa. So transcoding means transforming something from one form to another. And one must first be able to fully understand what the source text is about. And this way, deciding on the proper text type to be used in the transcoding process will be easier so we have to follow the steps in transcoding linear to non-linear so we won't go wrong so these are the steps that we have to follow please take note of them first read and understand the source text to get its main or central ideas then we also have extracting important details to be included Remember to use words or phrases only as much as possible. Do not make use of sentences or paragraphs, of course. That would be too much. And then to be organized, to classify information into categories. And the last one, make sure to use the appropriate nonlinear text in presenting your information. Okay, so let's now have the activity. I have prepared here some exercises for us to find out whether we really understood linear texts. Okay, so before the activity, let me greet Mam Vien Binluan from Mangahan High School. Hi, Mam Vien. So let's have the activity. Let us check how well you can understand linear texts. So we'll start with linear texts. The activity is like this. This is the instruction. Read the next paragraph, and then you answer the questions that follow. Choose only the letter of your choice. So we have choices here, okay? So let's start off with the first passage. Now, this passage was taken from GrammarBank.com, okay? It's about dolphins. Now, please read along. Okay? You can read there in the comfort of your own homes. Dolphins are regarded as the friendliest creatures in the sea, and stories of them helping drowning sailors have been common since Roman times. The more we learn about dolphins, the more we realize that their society is more complex than people previously imagined. They look after other dolphins when they are ill, care for pregnant mothers, and protect the weakest in the community as we do. Some scientists have suggested that dolphins have a language, but it is much more probable that they communicate with each other without needing words. Could any of these mammals be more intelligent than man? Certainly the most common argument in favor of man's superiority over them, that we can kill them more easily than they can kill us, is the least satisfactory. On the contrary, the more we discover about these remarkable creatures, the less we appear superior when we destroy them. 
Again, thank you for Grammar Bank for that passage. Now let us have the question. Question number one. It is clear from the passage that dolphins blank. Okay, it is clear from the passage that dolphins blank. Letter A. Don't want to be with us as much as we want to be with them. B. Are proven to be less intelligent than one thought. C. Have a reputation for being friendly to humans. D. Are the most powerful creatures that live in the ocean. And E. Are capable of learning a language and communicating with humans. Post your answers on the comment box now. Post your answer. What is your answer? Okay. The correct answer is letter. Okay, we have answers there. Okay, let us check whether the answer of Chino and Gian and Hans and Janelli are correct. The correct answer is letter C. Very good. They have a reputation for being friendly to humans. Next, let's have the next question. Number two, the fact that the writer of the passage thinks that we can kill dolphins more easily than they can kill us. Black. Letter A. Means that they are better adapted to their environment than we are. B. Shows that dolphins have a very sophisticated form of communication. Letter C. Proves that dolphins are not the most intelligent species at sea. B. Does not mean that we are superior to them. And letter E. Proves that dolphins have linguistic skills far beyond what we previously thought. Post your answers for number two. What is the correct answer? Come on. What is the answer? Okay, let us check if your answer is correct. If your answer is letter B, then that is correct. Very good. Next, number three. One can infer from the reading that blank. Letter A, dolphins are quite abundant in some areas of the world. B, Communication is the most fascinating aspect of the dolphins. Letter C, dolphins have skills that no other living creatures have, such as the ability to think. Letter D, it's not usual for dolphins to communicate with each other. And letter E, dolphins have some social traits that are similar to those of humans. Okay, what is the answer for letter, uh, for number three? The correct answer is letter but it's letter E. Dolphins have some social traits that are similar to those of humans. Very good. Now let's proceed to our second passage, The Unsinkable Ship, still from GrammarBank.com. Naval architects never claim that a ship is unsinkable, but the sinking of the passenger and car, car ferry Estonia in the Baltic surely should have never happened. It was well designed and carefully maintained. It carried the proper number of lifeboats. It had been thoroughly inspected the day of its fatal voyage. Yet hours later, the Estonia rolled over and sank in a cold, stormy night. It went down so quickly that most of those on board caught in their dark, flooding cabins had no chance to save themselves. Of those who managed to scramble overboard, only 139 survived. The rest died of hypothermia before the rescuers could pluck them from the cold sea. The final death toll amounted to 912 souls. However, there were an unpleasant number of questions about why the Estonia sank and why so many survivors were men in the prime of life, while most of the dead were women, children, and the elderly. Okay, let's have question number four. One can understand from the reading that okay, the life-saving equipment did not work well and lifeboat, lifeboats could not be lowered. B, the time faults and incompetent crew contributed to the sinking of the Estonia ferry. C, 139 people managed to leave the vessel but 
occupied in freezing water. Letter D, naval architects claimed that the Estonia was unsinkable. Letter E, most victims were trapped inside the boat as they were in their cabins. Okay, what is your answer? Okay, while we're waiting for the answer, hi, Miss Christine Vergara from San Nicolas. Okay, our answer for number four is letter Okay, letter E, most victims are trapped inside the boat as they were in their cabin. Next, number five. It is clear from the passage that the survivors of the accident, letter A, helped one another to overcome the tragedy that had affected them all. Letter B, were mostly young men, but women, children, and the elderly stood little chance. Letter C, helped save hundreds of lives. Letter D, are still suffering from severe post-traumatic stress disorder. And letter E, told the investigators nothing about the accident. What is your answer for number five? Number five. Okay, let me greet Mr. Rolf Fredrickson one from Mangahan High School. And of course, the principal of Mangahan High School is also watching, Ma'am Ma Munet Vega. Thank you for watching, ma'am. Okay, and we have Venancho Abrojena from uh, SDO Ifugao. How's the weather there, sir? Okay, so the answer for number five, uh, we have um, Samantha Mendoza with letter B. Is it letter B? That's correct. Maria Angela uh, Mendoza, that's correct. Okay, if you got it all correctly, then it's a good job for you. Clap your hands, everyone. You have achieved a good job. Next, let's proceed to the next activity. Now, the next activity we will now be analyzing the following nonlinear texts. Okay, a while ago, we had linear text when we actually uh, studied or comprehended uh, a different, actually two types or two examples of passages. Okay, now this time, you will be given different types of nonlinear texts and you will try to analyze each of them. And then we will also be answering the questions that follow. But this time, there are no choices. So you have to really, really study the graphs that we will be showing or I will be showing you in the next slides. Okay, let us start. The first slide is taken from the World Bank Statista 2020. Okay, so this is the Philippines unemployment rate from 1999 to 2020. Now, this was an example that we have also shown last week. So I hope you are familiar already with this graph. What type of graph is this? Can you please uh, comment what type of graph or what type of nonlinear text is this? It is an example of a what, what graph? It is a bar graph, pie graph. Is it a Venn diagram? Come on, what is it? Okay, it is a line graph. Good. Okay, now first question for this line graph is, number one, what year has the lowest percentage of unemployment rate? What year has the lowest percentage of unemployment rate? Okay, post your answer on our comment box. Okay, what is What year has the lowest percentage of unemployment rate? Okay, that would be, okay, let us see if John Layos's answer I mean, Chino Samonte's answer is correct. Let us check. Correct answer is 2019. Chino, you are correct. The correct answer is 2019. Very good, Chino. Next, number two. What is the percentage of unemployment rate in 2008? What is the percentage of unemployment rate in 2008? Post your answer, please. Post your answer. Okay, what is the percentage? I'm asking the percentage of unemployment rate in 2008. Okay. Okay. We have answers from Arnie D and from Samantha Mendoza. Which of 
these answers are correct, let us check. It is 3.72%. So Arnie, you got it correctly. And so with Jenny Ban, okay, that is 3.72% for 20OA. Very good. Next, let's have another type of nonlinear text. Now, what type is this text? Or, I mean, this non-linear text. What do you think is this type of non-linear text? Okay, come on. What type? Is it a bar graph, a line graph, or? Very good. It is a pictograph. Very good. Because there are pictures that would represent the data or the information for the various, uh, in, uh, for the various aspects here. So, let us have question number three. Question number three, which two kinds of trees have the same number? Which two kinds of trees have the same number? Okay, post your answers, please. So you will be answering two trees. Is it the mango trees, the banana trees, the rose, the coconut trees, or the grapes? Okay. Which has the same number okay okay we have answers here from arnie d and from chino samonte okay let us check if their answers are correct okay we have the mango trees and the coconut trees so that is correct we have correct answers from Ashley, from Jenny, from Chino, from Arnie, from Jeb, and from Angela. Congratulations, people, also with Gian. Thank you very much for participating. Next, let's have another example of uh, uh, nonlinear text here. Which example, or I mean, what type of nonlinear text is this one? One before I post the question, we have two questions here. Let me have first what type of uh, nonlinear text is this one? Okay, we have Chino's answer is a pie chart. Is it correct? Yes, very good, Chino. It's a pie chart. Very good. Now let's have question number four. Which place? has the highest percentage of OFWs. I want you to concentrate on the circle there, the pie. Okay, which place has the highest percentage of OFWs? What do you think is the answer? So you're going to choose among the following. We have Africa, we have North and South America, Europe, Australia, and Asia. Okay, what is the answer? Okay. We have some answers here from Jester, from Arnie, from Zar, from Ashley, and from Jenny. The correct answer is Asia with 85.5%. So you must you just imagine there are really a lot of OFWs here in Asia. Next, let's have question number five. For question number five. Which place is the second to the largest in terms of distribution of OFWs? Which place is the second to the largest in terms of distribution of OFWs? Okay, which is the second? Again, you have there, we have four remaining choices there. We have Africa, North and South America, Europe, and Australia. Which do you think? is the correct answer okay. okay some people are already answering let us check whether we have answered it correctly the correct answer is okay is it europe or is it asia okay let's have the correct answer is the okay, europe with 6.4 that's very, very good, people. So we have Fiona here. We have Brenda. We have Maria Angela, Jeb, Jonathan, Gian, and Jose. Okay. 
who got the answers correctly and some other people also got the answers correctly so very 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 good okay so now did you get everything correctly okay if you got everything correctly please react with a happy face okay so i will just be checking whether you have gotten it correctly those who got a five meaning to say a perfect score for non-linear texts please comment down a happy face okay happy faces please okay we have happy faces there okay very good chino and arnie you have a perfect score that's a very good sign that you are understanding everything okay we also have other people there so for those people who got a perfect score okay good job people you got it all correctly so now let us have some more uh, uh some more important points to remember okay now please don't forget the following okay but before i give this to you let me first see whether you have really learned something please comment down give me just one thing that you remembered okay in the lesson that we have today okay just one sentence what are the things or what give me just one thing that you have learned today come on post it there okay we still have some more happy faces here okay let's now have your learning okay before i post those important things that you have to remember Okay, come on, don't be shy. Okay. I learned, and then you post it. So I learned what? You can write there the definition of linear, or the definition of uh, nonlinear. You can also write there the different types of linear and nonlinear text because we have discussed that even last week. We have that. Okay, so you're just going to write there. Okay, according to Giancarlo Angan Gonzalez, he learned linear and nonlinear text. Very good. And we have from uh, Angela Canon. She learned about the different nonlinear text. Very good. And from Mariangela Mendoza, the difference between linear and nonlinear also. Okay, those are good things. And we are still having here some also some learnings from arnie the importance of graphic organizers and non-linear and linear also we also have from china the non-linear text which include charts and graphs examples of non-linear from john and from jose alfred uh linear and non-linear text very good thank you very much for those learnings and okay, don't forget that non-linear text is read from beginning to end in order to make sense of its content so it follows a sequential reading path now when we say sequential it means that you will be following a direction so that will be from beginning to end okay for you to understand everything and then for non-linear text we have a non-sequential uh, reading path Okay, so you can read elsewhere or you can read anywhere. You can understand it anywhere, okay? Not really following a direction. And it can be read without necessarily, yes, without following a prescribed pattern, okay? So next, now let's also remember that understanding linear and nonlinear texts will help in improving the reading comprehension of students so we also have here from harvey okay so also about linear and nonlinear, and then from gian he learned about linear and nonlinear text examples would be for linear is newspaper and then for nonlinear is a graph very good gian and then for christine norshaw we have also definitions of nonlinear text this is the opposite of linear and linear text refers to traditional text that needs to be read from beginning to end very good you really memorize the definition of linear text very good so the second thing that i would like you to remember is this both linear and non-linear texts are considered important in understanding reading materials okay so don't ever forget that 
okay? And of course, as uh, something to live by, let me just remind everyone that as a teacher and as a mother, I am reminding our dear students that a good reader is not somebody who reads fast, but somebody who understands what he is reading. So the goal of uh, the goal of reading or checking your reading proficiency is not just about speed; it is also about comprehension, which is more important. Okay? So when you read, the next time you read linear or non-linear text, be sure that you really, really understand everything. Okay. So and of course, now if you have. Uh, inquiries regarding the lesson, you may reach me at the following things. By the way, if you have questions, of course, don't be shy. Don't be afraid to ask. Okay, you have a lot of things here. I am going to give you my deputy email, my personal email, okay, Facebook and everything. We will maximize all the opportunities that you can reach me out. Okay, so first is my deputy email. That is grazel.texan at deped.gov.ph. You can send me an email for questions, anything. Next is my personal email, texandreesgmail.com. And then you can also contact me through my Facebook account. That's Mom Dres, so see section. And uh, this one is my Facebook account. And of course, I am also inviting everyone, please watch the video lessons that I have posted on YouTube. My channel is Drazel Knows, and please feel free to visit. And definitely, you will be learning a lot of educational videos will be posted there, aside from, of course, the e to lie online tutorial. Okay, this has been one interesting afternoon with you once again. So if you learned, please comment a heart on our Facebook page. Come on, comment a heart if you learned something. Okay, so again, let me thank everyone who have participated in today's lesson. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you will still be here next meeting. So once again, this is Tutor Drazel saying, Kahit nahihirapan, itulay natin yan. Okay? Thank you very much. Goodbye, everyone. See you next week. Bye. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Ito Live free online tutorial session sa Filipino. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Ito Live tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippine social media accounts. Paalam! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po, at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? 
ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto, kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Hi, dear learners! I am your teacher Res or tutor Res, and I will be your study buddy every Tuesday. That's 2.20 p.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. So if you want to learn more about the English language, especially in the grade level A, you can, uh, you can just tune in every Tuesday. That's 2.20 to 3 o'clock p.m. Okay, so before we proceed to our today's discussion, let me just give you some reminders. Okay, first, we are live on different FB pages such as DepEd Edit Unit, DepEd Tayo, and DepEd Philippines. Okay, second, if you have any questions or answers to my questions, you can simply type your comments and answers on our comment box below. Okay, third, if you want to learn and have fun learning with your friends, you can simply um, share this screen. And last reminder, I keep on reminding this, um, we are using Taglish or Tagalog in English in our class because we aim to make our tutorial sessions comprehensible for all. So please forgive me kung kailangan ko pong magtagalog sa ating discussion every now and then. Okay, so let me share my screen with you. Okay, I hope that you're seeing my screen now. Okay, so just before we... Okay, so while well, waiting for our um, screen to show, okay, let me just greet some of our um, viewers. Okay, I'd like to say hi to all the students, teachers, and school heads of Paranaque National High School Mate. Hello po sa mga taga Paranaque and also sa ating mga um, viewers today like Cherie, Lani, Arlene, and Mark. Hello sa inyong lahat. Okay, so now I think we are already on screen. Yes, there. Okay, now we are already on the eighth week of our English A tutorial session. Actually, this is our last week for the second quarter, okay? And after this, we will be having a very short um, break or rest. And then after that third quarter, na po tayo. and I hope I can still see you on the third quarter, okay? So again, I am Teacher Rest, and if you want to learn and have fun learning with me, you can just tune in every Tuesday, 2.20 p.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. So what do we need to prepare for our today's discussion? First, we have to prepare our self-learning modules, okay? So for those who don't know yet, we are using the Pivot uh, module from Calabrezon, okay? If you don't have it, it's okay. You can download it from DepEd Commons. That is LRMDS site of DepEd, okay? But if you don't have time to download it, you can just simply look at my presentation and you will be guided today. Okay, also, you have to prepare your pen and paper for note-taking. So, are you ready? I hope you are because I am ready now. Now, what do we need to learn in this um, lesson? Okay, in today's lesson, you are expected to recognize positive and negative messages conveyed in a text. So, you might be wondering, now we have seen these um, slides or these presentations last week. It's okay because this is just the continuation of our previous discussion, okay? So let's have the review. I'm very sure that if you were able to watch last week, you will be able to answer the following questions. Okay, all we have to do is to determine whether the tone word used in the statement is positive or negative. Okay, so to give you some idea, if you haven't watched the previous discussion, positive tone words are words that are formal, factual, um, kind, and nice. Okay, while negative tone words are words that are harsh, that are threatening, forceful, and argumentative. Okay, so let's see if you will be able to answer the following questions. Number one. Okay, hi po, uh, James Duarte. Hi, James Duarte, and also to Romilin Gonzalo. Hi, Romilin. Okay, so number one. The bags that my best friend bought were extravagant. Okay, so I would like to uh, commend or to thank Rafi. Rafi from last week, he corrected me on this. Okay, so I wrote 
was when I was in fact referring to the bad. So the correct word is worse. So thank you so much, Rafi, and I'll try my best to not commit that kind of mistake again. Okay, so the bags that my best friend bought were extravagant. Okay, so what do you think is the kind of tone word that we use in this statement? Positive or negative? Write your answer on our comment box. The bags that my best friend bought were extravagant. Okay, so what do you think is the kind of tone word that we use in this statement? Positive or negative? Okay, you can simply type your answers on our comment box. Okay, wow. So the correct answer is correct. Negative. Okay, that shows or that expresses negative connotation. Okay, good job. Next, number two. The temperature of the water in this pool is refreshing. Again, the temperature of the water in this pool is refreshing. Okay, so what do you think is the kind of tone word that was used in this statement? Positive or negative tone word? Okay, you can type your answer on your comment box. Okay, so yes, you are correct, James Duarte. Good job. The kind of tone word that we use in this statement is positive. Very good. Refreshing is a positive tone word. Okay, good job, um, James Duarte. And also Romilin Bunzuelo. Wow. Okay, next. Number three. They gave a very reasonable excuse for not turning in his assignment. Okay, one more time. Dave gave a very reasonable excuse for not turning in his assignment. So what do you think is the kind of tone word that we use in this, um, in this sentence or statement? Okay, write your answer on your comment box. Positive or negative tone word? Okay, hello, hands, Hannah. Hello, Hans. Okay, so Hans, uh, let's try to answer this question. What do you think is the kind of tool word that is used in this statement? Okay, hello, then take Christ, Darren, the Amistoso. Thank you so much. So Christ, Darren, and um, James and Alea are correct. Very good, guys. Okay, the correct answer is positive. Okay, reasonable is a positive tool word. Great job. Okay, next. She is a nerd since she just likes to study all the time. Again, she is a nerd since she just likes to study all the time. What do you think is the kind of tone word that is used in this statement? Positive or negative? You can write your answer on your comment box below. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are already on the four, fourth number. Okay, so thank you so much, Kevin, John, Valisar Ignacio. Hello, thank you so much, James Duarte, Alea, sorry, Christ and Hands. Okay, so nerd, is nerd a positive or negative tone word? When someone tells you you are a nerd, would that mean positive or negative to you? Hmm? Okay, so some said positive because maybe they don't um take that as a negative word okay but actually romilin and Delia are correct this has a negative connotation okay yeah uh, the speaker can simply say can simply say hard working you're a hard working student instead of dirt okay so next rebecca was so chatty that we slept very late last night again rebecca was so chatty that we slept very late last night so what do you think is the kind of tone word that we use in this statement positive or negative you can write your answers on our comment box below okay when someone tells you you're so chatty okay what do you think is the connotation of that is that positive or negative Okay, very good. Um, Alea, Kevin, Christ, Romilene, and Jaya. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, Chatty has a negative connotation. Okay, so great job, everyone. Now, let me just remind you, for those who haven't watched the previous discussion, tone words, 
are words that we use in a text to establish a message. And we have two kinds of tone words, positive and negative tone words. At depende po sa mga tone words na ginagamit natin, yung mensahe na makukuha ng ating mga listeners or readers. If we use positive tone words, the message that they would get is positive. But when we use negative tone words, the message that they would get is negative. So we have to be careful in choosing the words that we will use in our statements, okay? Now, positive tone words are words that are formal, factual, kind, benevolent, and respectful. Okay, those are the positive tone words. Now, the negative tone words are words that are harsh, threatening, aggressive, forceful, and disrespectful. Those are negative tone words that give negative messages. So, if we do not want to offend anyone, let's try to avoid these kinds of words, okay? Now, let's have the drill. So, thank you so much, Ruena, Antonio, Alea, James, Jaya, Shula, and Chris, and Kevin. Hello, thank you so much. And Robin, okay? So now, let's have the drill. Read the following conversations. Identify the emotion or feeling that is being expressed by the student. So let's try. Kung makukuha po natin yung kanilang emosyon o damdami. Number one. Okay. The teacher says, you made an A on the test. So yung ating student here is emotionless ha, because I don't want to give you the hint or the clue by looking at the photo or looking at the image. Okay, so emotionless po siya, do not rely on that. Okay, so the student says, wow, thank you, sir. This means a lot to me. What do you think is the emotion being expressed by the student? Is he happy, sad, angry, or scared? Okay, thank you, James. So what do you think is the emotion being expressed by the student here? Is he happy, sad, scared, or angry? Okay, now I'm getting correct answers from Shula, um, Samantha Paharon, hello, and from Romilin as well again. Okay, you are correct. The student here is happy. Okay, next. Happy then and sabot ni Ruena and Alea. Thank you so much, Ruena and Alea. Now let's down to the next one. Uh, the, the teacher says, you need a B on the test. Okay. The student answers, what? Are you sure I didn't make an A? Okay. So what do you think is the emotion being expressed by the student here? Is he happy, sad, scared, or angry? Come on, you can do it. Hello, then, kay Janice, but, um, Angel Adano. Hello, Janice. So, what do you think is the emotion being expressed by the student here? Is he happy, sad, angry, or scared? What? Are you sure I didn't make an A? Okay, so good job again, Romeline and Shula. The student might be angry here, okay? That's right. Okay, um, next, for the third um, sentence, or for the third dialogue, okay, the teacher says, you made a C on the test. The student answers, oh my, my mother will get mad at me. Hmm, what do you say is the emotion being expressed by the student here? Oh my, my mother will get mad at me. What do you think is the emotion of the student that was expressed by that statement? Happy, sad, angry, or scared? You can write your answers on our comment box. Okay. Yes. Um. Some answers sad. Uh, some answers sad, and some answers scared. Wow. Okay. It can be mixed emotion, right? Because getting a C could uh, make you sad. That's right. Okay. It can also um show uh fear. Or being scared because uh, he, his or her mother would get mad at him or her. Okay, that's right. Very good. Okay, so thank you so much again for my very attentive students. Now, the, the emotion or the attitude that was shown, that were shown in our examples are what we call tone. Okay, tone is the emotion or attitude that the writer embeds in writing. So, kapag po tayo ay nakikinig sa isang speaker, madali sa ating mga kuha yung kanilang emosyon kasi papakinggan lang natin yung pagtaas at saka pagbaba ng tono nila. Pero in writing, madali lang din na malaman 
kung ano ba yung emosyon ng writer. Tama? Kasi doon sa binasa natin, kahit binasa lang natin siya, we were able to get the emotion or the attitude that is being expressed by the writer. Okay? And that is what we call tone. So the tone can be happy, sad, angry, scared, or serious tone. Okay? Now, by knowing the tone, we will be able to understand understand the message of the text. So, ibig sabihin pala, ma'am, pag alam ko na yung damdamin ng may akda, alam ko na rin yung gusto niyang mensahe iparating, yes po. Okay, by knowing the tone, we will be able to easily get the message of an author or of a writer. Okay? So, let's uh, have the task now. Okay. I have here a poem. So, all we have to do is to read the poem and answer the questions that follow. Okay? So, I have this. So, I hope you can see it clearly kasi medyo uh, maliit yung aking font. Tignan po nga kung kita natin. Okay, basa naman po natin. Ano po? So, let me read this with, uh, let me read this to you. Okay? So, thank you, James, Leia, Rowena. Okay, uh, for those students who are actively participating in my session, you can write the name of your school so that I could mention them. Okay? Para malaman naman ng inyong mga principals and teachers that you are very active sa ating mga itulay sessions. Do not be shy. Okay? Write the names of your schools. Okay? So, the title of our poem for today is The Land of Nod. Okay? That is by Robert Louis um, Stevenson. So, let me read this to you. <clears throat> the Land of Nod by Robert Louis Stevenson From breakfast on through all the day at home among my friends I stay but every night I go abroad afar into the land of Nod all by myself I have to go with none to tell me what to do all alone beside the streams and up the mountain sides of dreams. The strangest things are there for me, both things to eat and things to see, and many frightening sights of broad till morning in the land of Nod. Try as I like to find the way, I never can get back by day, nor can remember plain and clear the curious music that I hear. Okay, so I will flash this for... um. 10 seconds more, or at least 20 seconds more, for you to grasp the meaning of the poem. Or maybe while I'm flashing this, I will read it one more time, okay? The Land of Nod by Robert Louis Stevenson. From breakfast on, through all the day, at home, among my friends, I stay. But every night, I go abroad, afar, into the Land of Nod. All by myself, I have to go with none to tell me what to do. All alone beside the streams and up the mountain sides of dreams. The strangest things are there for me, both things to eat and things to see. And many frightening sights abroad till morning in the land of Nod. Try as I like to find the way, I never can get back by day nor can remember plain and clear the curious music that I hear. Okay, so I hope that you were able to read and understand the poem. Okay, so hello, Brianna Tabora from TES. What does TES stand for? Okay, hello sa mga TES and hello sa yo Brianna. Okay, so now the question is, number one, what do you think is the poem all about? It is about what? Sige nga, let's see who can think very critically here. What do you think is poem about? Write your answers on our comment box. Every night I go abroad. Every night. What do you think is the poem about? Medyo nahihirapan siguro kayo, no? Okay, but uh, later malalaman natin kung ano ba talaga ang paksa sa ating poem na binasa. Okay? Sige nga. Every night I go abroad. It happens every night. Okay? So what do you think is the poem all about? Okay? So, alright. Okay, the poem is about... The poem is about dreaming. 
or a dreamland. Diba sabi niya doon, at, uh, in the morning, he eats breakfast with friends or family, but at night, he has to go alone, far away, abroad. Okay, ibig sabihin, it happens when he falls asleep and he starts to dream. Imagination. Okay, tama naman din. Um, uh, Romilin, pwede rin, no? About travel, Elena, yes. Shula, it's about a dream. Okay, yes, travel. Tama naman din si James and si Elena, no? Traveling. Pero traveling at night alone is actually about dreaming or a dreamland. Okay, so let's uh, go back to the poem. Sabi niya kasi dito, from breakfast all through all the day at home, among my friends, I stay. Nasa bahay lang siya. But every night, I go abroad. Can we go abroad overnight? No. So meaning ito has something to do with travel, has something to do with dreaming. Pag tayo po ay nakakatulong, nakakarating tayo sa kung saan-saan, tama sa mga lugar beyond our imagination. So tama din naman yung sagot ninyo na travel and imagination. So it's all about a dream or a dreamland. Okay, so ibig sabihin pa lamang, the land of not is about a dreamland. A, a land where we can have our um, limited, limited imagination. Okay? Great job. Next. What do you think is the speaker's tone in the poem? Pag sinabi ulit natin tone, emotion or attitude. So ano kayong mga emotion na naipakita ng ating writer dito? Sige, pa-flash ko ulit yung ano. What do you think is the emotion of the writer here? There can be more than one emotion, uh, more than one emotions that are expressed or shown in this poem. Sige nga, tignan natin. Ano yung damdamin nung may akda habang sinusulat na to? Marami pa yung mga salita na makikita, na mapapakita sa atin ng damdamin nung may akda. Okay? Um, from Esmeralda Ligaspi Duque, Van Aldrich Rubino from Rojas, Central School Rojas Isabella. Wow! Hello po sa mga taga Rojas Isabella, especially to, sa mga taga Rojas Elementary School. Okay, hello po. Okay, wow, may nakikita na ako. May nagsabing happy, may nagsabing scared. Okay, so si iba kaya? Ano kaya yung tingin nilang nararamdaman ng ating writer dito sa pubi? From breakfast on, through all the day, at home, among my friends, they stay. But every night, they go abroad, afar into the land of not. Okay, all by myself, I have to go with none to tell me what to do. All alone beside the stream, send up the knock inside the room. So, ano kaya yung nararamdaman ng ating speaker dito? Okay, sabi naman ni Franz Angelo Carayon Kakorapia. So, wow, is that um, a, a medical term? Okay, so sana masabi mo sa akin, Franz, kung anong meaning niya. And thank you so much, ha. that's a new learning. Okay, um, Shula scared, sabi niya. Si Brianna, sabi niya. Um, happy. Sabi naman ni James, sad and scared. Oh, dalawa yung emotion na nakuha niya, no? Si Jaya sad, si Romilin scared, si Elia sad, si Esmeralda excite, excited, okay? And si James scared din. So, tignan na nga natin kung ano nga po ba ang talagang sagot, ma'am. Okay, so what is the speaker's tone in the poem? Okay, hindi ko kayo nililimit sa isa or hindi naman necessary na pareho tayo ng pag-intindi because this is poet and we can uh, come up with different perceptions depende sa ating nararamdaman talaga habang binabasa natin yung poem. So, do not uh, limit yourself. Kung ano yung nalagay ko dito, hindi lang yun yung pwedeng tamang sagot. Okay? You can have your own perception. It's a poem. It's broad. Okay? So, what is the speaker story in the poem? This is my opinion or this is my perception. The speaker expressed amazement or amusement, fright, sadness, and frustration. Depending doon sa part ng poem. So, papaliwanan ko po yun sa isa. So, tama po ba yung mga sagot natin? Yes, tama yung scared, tama yung happy, tama yung excited, tama yung um, sa, uh, meron mas sad, meron din sad. Okay? Tama yan. So, papaliwanan po natin isa-isa. Okay. So, sa second stanza tayo, sabi na dito, All by myself, I have to go with none to tell me what to do. All alone beside the streams and up the mountain sides of peace. This is the part of the poem kung saan pinapakita the, the writer or the poet gives us the image of his dreamland. Di ba may mga streams, may mga rivers, may bodies of water, may mountains. This is beyond imagination. So ano kaya yung nararamdaman natin habang binabasa natin to? Or ano yung nararamdaman niya na gusto niya iparamdam sa atin? There is 
the awe, the amaz the awesomeness, the the amazement, the amusement, the excite, ah uh, the excitement. Tama yung sabot ng isa nating student. Oh. Na excited siya kasi this is something na pwede maging escape from reality. Tama ba? This is something new. This is something exciting. So dito sa part na to, our writer or our poet maybe shows awe or um amusement. Okay? Na, papunta naman tayo doon sa third la, the third stanza, okay? Sabi dito nung ating writer or nung ating poet, The strangest things are there for me, strangest, both things to eat and things to see, and many frightening sights abroad till morning in the land of nod. So, tama po ba yung scared? Tama din, somehow, di ba? Na-affin siya, yes, extended dito yung O. Extended dito yung, extended dito yung happiness or yung uh, excitement, okay? And yet, nakakaramdaman siya ng konting fear, konting fright, konting surprise, di ba? Konting takot. Bakit? Because meron siyang ginamit na words na strangest at saka frightening. Oo nga, maganda, mag uh, masaya, kasi somehow nakakaskay siya sa reality. Pero there are things that are odd, Diba? There are things that are strange, mga maraming bago, maraming kakaiba, and that might give him the scared feeling, okay? So that's right, tama din yung sagot ninyo, okay? And the fourth stanza or the last stanza says, Try as I like to find the way I never can get back by day, nor can remember plain and clear the curious music that I hear. So may sumagot dito kanina, sad. And this is the part of the poem. This is the stanza that shows sadness or frustration. Bakit? Kasi kahit ang gusto niyang isama yung kanyang dreamland pagkagising niya, pag tayo po ba'y nananaginip, pagkagising natin, nandun pa rin tayo? Hindi na. Okay? All the happiness or all the little fear would have to end once na uh, gumising ka na. Tama ba? Okay, so the, the the sadness or the frustration comes in in the fourth stanza. Okay, so good job everyone. Tama ka. Walang maling sagot. Lahat tama. Lahat ng emotions or lahat ng tone na sinagot niyo dito sa ating comment box ay lumitaw or lumbas ating poem. Okay, so just a review. Uh, lagay ang sagot sa ating comment box. What is the tone or what is the speaker's emotion in the second stanza? Sige nga, kung naalala nyo, all by myself, I have to go with no one to tell me what to do. All alone beside the streams and up the mountain sides of peace. Ano yung tone or emotion niya dyan? My streams, my mountains, something new, something exciting. What is the tone of our speaker here? Okay? Write your answers in our comment box. Okay. Uh, sige, bati tayo kay Shula sa mga kapaharod. Kasi Shula isa sa mga good students ko today. Shula, sana nakita ulit kita next week. Um, Shula sa mga kapaharod from MNHS. Balingoan, Misamis Oriental. Wow, taga Misamis ka pala. Hello, Shala. Hello sa mga taga Misamis Oriental. Okay, so tama ang sagot ni Esmeralda, uh, Brianna, okay, and Shula na dito sa ating second stanza ang naramdaman niya ay excitement or happiness. Okay? How about in the third stanza? What is the tone or the emotion that was expressed by our speaker or by the poet? The strangest things are there for me, both things to eat and things to see, and many frightening sights abroad till morning in the land of night. What is the emotion or what is the tone being shown here? Okay, you can write your answers on our comment box. Wow! Talaga na, gagaling naman ng mga students natin. Ano po? May nakuha na ako isang answer. Okay, let's wait for the others. Strangers. Frightening. Okay, what is the emotion being shown here? Okay, so siguro nagtatype yung iba, pero Esmeralda and 
um, Elea got the correct answer. Meron pa yung happiness. Yes, ma'am. Kasi extended yung kanyang happiness. Pero konting fear din. Okay? May happiness and konting fear. Okay? Happy kasi awesome yung nakikita niya. But konting fear kasi kakaiba yung kanyang nakikita. Okay? Good job. Great job, everyone. Okay? And the last stanza. Try as I like to find the way I never can get back by day. Nor can remember, plain and clear, the curious music that I hear. So, pagkagising nga natin, no, nakakalimutan natin minsan yung napapaniginipan natin. Okay, so what do you think is the emotion or the tone being shown in this stanza? Okay, so tama rin kanina si James at saka si Jaya. Si James, very active din, no? James Duarte. Ano school mo, James? And Drea... And Jaya and Esmeralda, okay? So, what do you think is the emotion being shown in this stanza? Ayan, may nakukuha na ako correct answers. How about the others? I never can get back by day. Okay, so good job everyone, Esmeralda, Elia, Brianna, and... Wow, ang dami, Jaya, and you know, are sad and lonely or frustrated. Kasi, no matter how much he tries... To, uh, to stay, di ba? Or isa naman sa reality yung kanyang dream. Eh, hindi pwede. So, great job, everyone. Wow, I'm so happy. My heart is so full right now because of your participation. Okay, now, next question. Ah, okay pala. Sorry, ano na pala to? Next question. So, what do you think is the tone, uh, what do you think is the message being expressed by our speaker? Sige, nakapakita ko na lang. Does the speaker express positive or negative message? Ito, last question na to. So, upon reading the whole poem, what do you think is the message of the poet or the writer? Does he give us or does he express positive or negative message? All in all, pag binasa mo yung buong tula, ano yung naramdaman mo? Positibo ba or negatibo? Sige nga. Ano kayo naramdaman ni, ni Yunar, ni James, ni Elea, ni Brianna, ni Romilyn, ni Esmeralda, tsaka ni Elea, ni, ni Brianna, doon sa poem na binasa natin? What was the message? Does it have positive or negative message? Positive or negative? Upon reading the whole poem, is it positive or negative? Okay, wow, may nakuha na ako isang sagot, but I'd like to hear from others too. Okay, so what did you feel or what message did you get? Positive or negative message? Mm -hmm. Wow, okay, wow, thank you so much. Okay, so tama lahat, si Esmeralda, Elea, Brianna, James, Jaya, and you, Nor. The poem shares a story of a man who escapes from reality through his dream, uh, through his dreams okay it gives us the feeling of awe and amusement therefore the poem gives us positive message okay so great job everyone so nagkaklapa ko ngayon sobrang happy ko sobrang tama lahat ng sagutin niya okay so positive po yung message sa atin ng poem na the land of not okay now just to summarize the lesson last part na po tayo na ating discussion you just have to answer the following questions okay number one uh, you just have to identify what's being defined or described by the following statements. So, number one, it refers to the emotion or attitude a writer embeds in writing. What is this? So, tama James, Romilin, tama din kayo, positive message. Great job. So, last part na po tayo to summarize what you've learned today, okay? Just identify what is being defined or described in the following statement. So, number one, it refers to the emotion or attitude a writer embeds in writing. What is this? Hello, what is this? I know you can do it. Say again, 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so the answer is 
tone, okay? Tone refers to the emotion. Ang tono, sa, uh, sa Tagalog po yan ay tono. Eh, sa Tagalog, Filipino, okay, tono din po siya. Tone o to, tono ay ang emotion or damdamin na pinapakita na may akda. Okay? Yes. Later yan, yeah, Ms. Maralda. Next, these are the words a writer uses to establish a message. Okay? What do we call the words that we use to establish to establish a message? Meron tayong dalawang kind nito. May positive at saka negative. So what are these words? Okay, oh yes, please. So, kung meron tayong tone, ano yung tawag sa words na yan? Okay, you can get it. Okay, yes, ilin yan, tone yan. Yes, tama ka. Medyo na late lang siguro yung zen. Okay, I'm happy daw. Okay. Okay, so these are words that a writer uses to establish a message. What are these? Five, four, three, two, one. Nako, those are tone words, diba? Those are tone words. The words that we use to establish a message. Okay, good job. May nakakuha naman din ng tamang sagot. Okay? So, tone words po yun. Tone, ang tono o damdami. Ang tone words naman ay words that we use to establish a message. Okay, pa-shout out daw. Sabi ni Kyle Darnell Laksamana. Hello, Kyle. Okay, now, ito madali na lang to. Kaya-kaya natin to. Formal, factual, benevolent, kind, Respectful words establish blank message. Okay? You can do it. It's very easy. Okay? Formal, factual, benevolent, kind, and respectful words establish blank message. What kind of message? Dalawa lang yan. Okay? Wow! Sige, tignan natin kung makukuha din ng iba. May nakakuha na lang tamang sagot. Okay, wow, yes. Um, Romanine and Esmeralda, you are correct. Positive tone words. Okay, good job. Those are words that are kind and nice. Okay, and last question. Harsh, forceful, threatening, argumentative, and disrespectful words establish blank message. Okay, what are these kinds of words? Or what is the kind of message that these words give or express? Okay, so tama kanina si, wow, ito bago si Akisha Ariola. Um, tama din si Romilin, Jaya, and Elea. Okay, so tama kayong lahat. Good job. How about this one? Harsh, forceful, threatening, argumentative, and disrespectful words establish blank message. Okay, wow, great job. Tama si Esmeralda, si Brianna. Si Akisha, si James. Wow, James, Alea, and Jaya. These are words that establish negative message. Wow, great job, everyone. Okay, so thank you. Tama din si Yunar. Okay, and si Jaya. Okay, so thank you so much, everyone. So that will be the end of our today's discussion. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being with me today. And I hope I can see you again in the following weeks, especially when we start our third quarter. So remember, if you want to have fun and learn, uh, have fun learning the English language, especially in the grade level 8, you can just tune in every Tuesday. That's 2.20 to 3 o'clock p.m. So thank you so much and God bless you all. Okay, thank you. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. 
Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Ito Live free online tutorial session sa Filipino. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Ito Live tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippine social media accounts. Paalam! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po, at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pamumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. All right, good afternoon everyone, especially to our dear learners. How are you? I will be your tutor for English 9 and I am tutor Jester. So let's begin. All right, so last week with Sir, uh, with tutor um, Jess Lechido, you were able to discuss the article, We Are Not the Virus, Health Workers Speak to UNICEF About Their Struggles. Now, this article has something to do with our health workers, obviously, that goes beyond the call of duty just to stop the spread of the virus. Kaya, we as a citizen should, or I guess we, uh, um, we should use appropriately, or most appropriately, the term must. So we must follow the health protocols. Kumbaga, we must help one another. Not only the nurses, not only the doctors, our health workers, or even the BHWs in our barangays or barangay health workers will act. But also, yung lahat, we must follow these protocols religiously. Ha? It is for us to prevent the spread of the virus, especially nowadays. Talagang meron daw bagong variant. Kaya, especially kayo mga learners, you need to stay at home. All right? Okay, so speaking of the health heroes or health uh, care workers, we have here the learning task eight. Um, ito pong ating learning task eight ay matatakuan, especially itong ating activities na mga ito as ating pivot caliber zone. Now, here is the instruction. You are to recognize the present real-time heroes. So who do you think are the real-time real -time heroes na meron tayo sa panahon ng pandemia? amid the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic by composing an acrostic poem with the phrase, Our Hero. Familiar na naman kayo, di ba, sa acrostic? It goes like this one. Ayan. So as you can see on the screen, we have here the title, Our Hero, and based from these letters, O-U-R, that's R, H-E-R-O, Hero, or Our Hero, you are to form an acrostic. So, mas maganda siguro kung ang mapaform natin is a poem. So, kung kaya, kung kaya lamang. Kung hindi naman, kung pwedeng a simple statement will do. Alright? So, so, kung hindi naman ang oras natin. Pero, I want you to do this siguro after our English 9 session. Ang babalikan natin ito ha. So, I'll be expecting your answers after na mga English sessions later on. Ayan, babalikan ko yung mga comments ninyo. Now, I have here an example. 
Okay. So as you can see, I have here the title, Our Hero. Oh, on and off duty, you are there. You, understanding the needs of everyone. Are, relative or not, you serve with a heart. H, honorable work to make us proud. E, enthusiasm for the work that you vowed. R, remarkable work to keep everyone safe. And O, outstanding job you do for everybody. I will repeat. O, on and off duty, you are there. You, understanding the needs of everyone. R, relative or not, you serve with a heart. H, honorable work to make us proud. E, enthusiasm for the work that you vowed. R, remarkable work to keep everyone safe. And O, outstanding job you do for every day. That is our acrostic, our hero. I'll be expecting your, uh, how do you call it, your uh, online outputs later on. You will just simply type in or key in your um, across it in our comment box later na lamang. Mamaya na lamang kapag natapos na ang ating mga English session. So, yun ang inyong assignment ha para sa ating English 9. Habangan ko yan mamaya online. Batiin muna natin ang ating mga uh, viewers from Pangao Integrated School, si Akisha Ariola. Very good, ha? So, ito po ay grade 9. Come from Kahila, Jill, kaya Mina. Thank you so much po. All right, so let's proceed. Now, as I have said a while ago, we'll be having our review. Makakaroon tayo ng review from the entire quarter two. And these are the topics that you had with Sir Madge, with me, and Sir Just Let You Do last time. Eto. So we had this crossing the bar. The bar, it is a poem. An excerpt from President Obama's presidential proclamation it is a selection. Then, schema. Alam naman natin ang schema. Or it is your background knowledge. Yung mga nalaman o mga pagkakalam nyo based from the topic. Okay? So, as well as making annotations. Community plan. Babalikan natin yan maya-maya. The Game of the Magi. It is a short story. Community spirit drives volunteer firefighters in Portugal. It is an article. And changing values in the VUCA world. Dapat, tandaan nyo pa yan, ha? Ano ba yung V? Ano yung U? Ano yung C? Ano yung A? And what is V or VUCA all about? Ayan. And, uh, yeah, we have When I Was One in Twenty, it is a poem. And our favorite, Beowulf. Alam ko, yun ang pinaka nagustuhan yung topic from the entire quarter two of English 9. Very good. All right. So I have here an activity. Mostly kasi ang ating gagawin, review activity na eh. Okay? So here is the directions for our first activity. You are to rearrange the jumbled letters to form the correct word. And I have there the hint or the meaning. What do you think is the word that we are looking for? It means change rapidly and unpredictably. Ulitin natin. It means change rapidly and unpredictably. So what do you think? Is this word? Ano kaya? Isa yan sa B-U-C-A. Okay. So that is volatile. Good job. Nagaling na ating mga learners, ha? Very participative. Palagi. So ano yung volatile sa Tagalog? Pag sinabi natin volatile, ito yung pabago-bago. Pag, uh, volatile world, pabago-bago um, uh, sitwasyon ng ating mundo. Like this one, meron tayong pandemyang kinakaharap. Next, we have here a factor involved in a complicated process or situation. A factor involved in a complicated process or situation. Ano kaya ito? What do you think? is this word. So we have, um, a while ago, we have the V. It's the volatile. Ano kaya yung sunod sa 
um, B U C A. O, yun nga, letter U, di ba? So ano kaya itong letter U na ito? Another clue. It's uncertain. Very good. Good job, learners. Thank you so much. Great, huh? Yes, you got it right, Marco Antonio Ambagan. Very good. For sure, natutuwa ang iyong teacher at this moment. Ayan. So pag sinabi natin uncertain, hindi sigurado. Pero sa ating sagot na ito, siguradong sigurado tayo. All right? We have the third one. Oh, sorry. I, were, I was able to reveal already the word. <laughs> and that is complexity. When we say complexity, it is the state of having many parts and being difficult to understand or find an answer to. Okay? So, pag complexity, complicado. Okay? All right. Next. It is the state of having many parts and being difficult to understand or find answers to. Actually, almost the same meaning eh. It's ambiguity or may kalabuan. Okay? So, another one. I'm sure that you are, uh, um, how do you call this, very active when it comes to answering this Activities. Talagang kita-kita natin, watching or viewing from my Bunga Elementary School Annex, we have Ethel Analap. Oh, very good, huh? Now, next one. Thank you so much, Marco. It is a viable skill to develop in improving communication. Ano kaya ang hinahalap natin word? What do you think is the word we are looking for? We have two words. You got it right, Jessica. It's Reading comprehension. Thank you so much. Also, Mom Resolina. Thank you. Next. What do you think is this word or words are these words? It benefits us from what we gain in reading. Ano kaya? Two words again. Napag-aralan niya yan. You have learned that before in the previous weeks. It's the Macro scales. All right, so what are those macro scales? What do you think? As you remember, what are those? Uh, I will reveal uh, what are those four macro scales that learners and us should possess? Uh huh. Good afternoon, watching from CB, Copal Elementary School, SDO Cotabato. Nona Lupina, thank you so much po. And what are those mac four macro skills? Ano, ano kaya yung apat na yon? I'm still waiting for your answers. Online. Come on. All right. So it's time for us to reveal. These four are, number one, listening. Two, speaking. Third, reading. And fourth, writing. Nothing. Macro skills we have listening, speaking, reading, and writing. So we are using our senses for us to do this macro skills. Thank you so much. Very active. Marco Antonio Ambagan, huh? Very good. Okay, next. Another word or words for you to look for or to guess. It involves the visions, goals, policies, and strategies for achieving social, economic, and environmental sustainability within the community. Again, it involves the visions, goals, policies, and strategies for achieving social, economic, and environmental sustainability within your or within our community. How do you call this, Paya? It's what? Thank you so much, Jessica. It's what we call very good, Jessica. It's community plan. Uh, actually, uh, Grace, this, our community should have this plan. Kaya pag mayroon mga disasters like earthquake, upload sa al, there is a plan for you to do. Especially at mga LGUs, di ba? Meron dapat niyang mga plano. Aalamin niyan, ibibigay yan sa atin. 
then. Okay. So another guessing game activity we have here under the nine dimensions are behavior patterns under the VUCA. All right. So here it goes. Yeah. Ano kaya yung nine na yun? What are those nine? The meaning? Willingness to try new things. What do you think? It is the willingness to try new things. What is the answer for it? Okay. Still waiting for your responses. It's what? You have here the hint. You are to arrange the jumbled letters to form a word based from the meaning. It's flexibility. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So next one. Sorry, imagine that our ating uh, ang ating uh, laptop. All right. So another word. It means rapidly grasping new ideas. Mabilis daw na nakakuha o nakakapag-isip ng mga bagong ideas. It's what we call speed. All right, learners, you got it right. Very good. Huh? I can see in the comment section that most of the students are participative or most of the viewers are very participative. Good job, guys. Next, we got... All right. So, testing out new ideas. Again, testing out new ideas now. It's something to do with the science. It's the science subject, but not all the time. Okay, it's what? It's, you got it right, it's experimenting. Bravo, very good, huh? Next. Oh, we got here the two words. Taking on challenges. Taking on challenges. You got there the, another hint. The, jumble, the jumbled letter, letters, and the word risk taking. What about risk? It's what? All right. It's performance risk taking. So you have there the risk, the word risk. So we need to take risk sometimes for us to evolve, for us to become successful. We should not uh, put ourselves um, in a simple situation. So we need to take risk for us to become successful then. But not all the time. We should choose dinaman. Okay. Next, we got oh, another risk taking. It means asking others for help that leads to learning and change. What are we looking for? What word or words we are looking for? What do you think? Okay. Asking others for help that leads to learning and change. It's interpersonal risk taking. Oh, I can see in the comment box. Very good, huh? very active our dear learners not only the learners but also our parents and our fellow teachers thank you so much what all right so next we got increasing your knowledge what about increasing your knowledge our hint to jumbled uh letters or jumbled words we have there what increasing your knowledge so it only shows that you should grasp new knowledge or information. Oh, based on the word information, you got the correct, uh, you got the correct answer. Yeah, no, wala, no, wala lang yung ano, name. We have information gathering. So if you gather new information, you increases your or you increase your knowledge. Nadadagdaga ng ating, ng ating galing, ng ating mga nalalaman. All right. Next, we got asking for feedback. What about asking for feedback? It's what? 
feedback seeking. Okay, very nice. Okay, so I guess ayan, medyo okay na ang ating uh, ang ating um, live stream. Going back with this one. Okay. For a while. All right. Thank you so much, webinar director. All right. So we got here. All right. Next, after the information gathering, let's move on with asking for feedback. And I was able to tell it a while ago. It's feedback seeking. Now, let's move. Taking time to reflect on your effectiveness. What about this one? Taking time to reflect on your effectiveness. Ano kaya ito? So you need to reflect and that is reflecting. All right. Thank you so much for. Okay. Ayan. <laughs> okay. Pasya na kanina. Hindi nag-move ang ating uh, PowerPoint. Nagkaroon lang ng problema. But ito. Let's continue. Okay. So um, let's move on with another guessing game activity. And it is our favorite story, which is Beowulf. I know that you're familiar with this, this story with that man, a very brave and strong man. And that is only Beowulf. Okay? So let's proceed. This is the directions. You are to identify the characters from Beowulf. You have there the hint and also the meaning. Or I mean, you are to fill in the words or the statements. It is an ancient, or who is this character? This one, an ancient, powerful serpent, the blank, mm. guards a hoard of treasure. Beowulf died because of its poisonous bite. Namatay daw si Beowulf dahil sa kanyang very poisonous. Ano kaya? Or sino kaya character ito sa Beowulf? Online? Come on. Okay, you got it right. It's the dragon. So, hindi yung ina ni Grendel, ha? Not the mother of Grendel, kung nakapatay. Okay, Beowulf. But the dragon. Thank you so much, Marco Antonio Ambagan. Okay, next up, we got another from Beowulf. We have here a Danish warrior who is just, who is jealous. Of Beowulf again, a Danish warrior who is jealous of Beowulf. What do you think? Is this character we're looking for? Okay, so it begins with letter U. What do you think? Uh huh. Sorry, you're wrong. Your answer is wrong. It's not the one we're looking for. It, it starts with letter U. It ends with letter H. We arrange or rearrange the jumbled letters to form the character that we are looking for. A Danish warrior who is jealous of Beowulf. Who do you think is it? Come on. Online. It's what? It's who? It's Unferred. All right. Very good, huh? Very participative. You got it right. Come with that, Erwin. Thank you so much. Ang galing talaga, ha? Good afternoon. Also, yo, you did it also correct. Abigail Barlis Mercado. So as you write your answers, can you also write the school, your school? Saan ba kayo galing na school? Saan ba kayo uh, pumapasok? For your teacher would be happy and your principal as well. Come on. All right. So next, we got, ah, we have here the two words. We're looking for two words. It is an unnamed swamp hag. Blank seems to possess fewer human qualities than Grendel. Again, an unnamed swamp hag seems to possess fewer human qualities than Grendel. What do you think is the character that we are looking for? 
Good afternoon po. Happy watching from Hilario y Hermosa Memorial High School. Thank you so much, Suzanne Karunungan, Austria. Salamat po, Suzanne. All right. Okay. Sino kaya? You got it, Jessica. It's Grendel's mother. Very good. Okay. Next up. Oh, you are familiar with this guy. Oh, parang partially I was able to reveal the answer because I have said guy. He's the protagonist of the epic. It's a Gittish hero who fights the monster, Grendel. The protagonist of the epic, Blank, is a Gittish hero who fights the monster, Grendel. You have heard the protagonist word. When we say protagonist, it means yung bida. Yung bida sa kwento. Kapag sinabi naman natin protagonist, yun yung kabaligtaran ng protagonist. Kaya yun ang laban. Okay? So kapag protagonist, bida. Kapag antagonist, laban. So, sino kaya itong bida na ating hinahanap? And that is Abigail Barlis Mercado Ruby Ann Je... Um, uh, who else? You got it right. You got it right. Terry Ann Lanzar Cantario. It's none other than the strong and brave man, Bebo. Very good. Talagang familiar na familiar, ha? Paborit ang paborit natin. Si Bebo. Si Bebo. Dapat we should all possess uh, being brave and strong. For us, para tayo ay, pag mayroong mga problema, we won't be able to lose ourselves. Okay? Good. Next up. Yeah, Bebo. Ayan. Another two words. You are to identify this character, the King of Danes. Sino kaya itong hari ng Danes? That blank enjoys military success and prosperity. A wise and aged ruler. The King of the Danes. Blank enjoys military success and prosperity. A wise and aged ruler. Ano kaya ang ibig sabi? Uh, meron tayong word there na ruler. What is the, uh, bago natin sagutin yung, uh, before we um, reveal the character that we are looking for, ano kaya muna yung ibig sabihin ng ruler? Ayan. Yung, yung ano, pang measure? This is according to this word or this sentence? It's not. Ruler means a leader. Ayan. Based from this sentence, or that statement, it ruler means a what? Online. Kasasabi ko lang. <laughs> ruler means you leader. Ayan. We should all possess being a leader then, Di ba? Ito kayo, mga grade 9 learners. Para pagdating ng panahon, uh, sabihin na natin, you will become politicians someday. Magaling kayong mamuno ng inyong mga barangay ang inyong mga municipality or who knows, buong Pilipinas. Ayan. Also, the term head. Thank you so much, Terry Ann, Lanzar, and um, Roswell. You got it correctly. Saan ba yung lugar? Sige. Ito nga. Ayan. Very good, ha? Huh? Let's reveal now. Wala nakakuha ng tamo sagot, ha? Huh? <laughs> It's none other than King Rothgar. Ayan. So, si King Rothgar. And next, we got the another one. Ayan. Yeah. A young kinsman of Beowulf who helps him in the fight against the dragon while all of the other warriors run away. A young king's man, a Beowulf, who helps him in the fight against the dragon while all of the other warriors run away. Sino kaya yun? Sino kaya do yung uh, kasakasama lagi nito si Beowulf sa mga pakikipagbakbakan? When we say king's man, parang 
closest, or pwede natin sabihin closest relative ha, or pwede natin best buddy or best friend. Nitong si Baywolf, sino kaya yun? Sino kaya ito? We're looking for, all right, you got it correctly, Marco, it's none other than Wigla. Okay, from Mangahan High School, itong si Marco, Antonio, Ambagan. Thank you so much, very participative today, ha? Also, shout out to Roswell, to Princess Elise Vargas, to Terry Ann, to Ruby Ann, ayan, according to Ruby Ann, kanina, kakayanin daw. Okay. <laughs> like Beowulf, kailangan natin kayanin ang mga challenges that we are facing. Diba? For us to become what? A successful person in the near future. Okay. So, Yeah, thank you so much, Julia. Yes, we still have time, and I guess uh, we need. Um, it's better for me to go back with our um, essential activity a while ago, the one that I posted in the first in our first part. Let me go back with our PowerPoint presentation. Uh huh. Wait, lang. Say shapo. I will be uh, um, putting it back. We still have time. All right. Thank you so much for being with me. But it's not um, final yet. Going back with our learning class eight, we are to recognize the present real-time heroes. Dung sa story na Beowulf, siempre heroes si Beowulf na kanilang community. Now, amid the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, who do you think is or are your real-time heroes? And for you to them, you are to compose an acrostic poem with the phrase "our hero." I will give you enough time to do this. Ano kaya? Ayan. By uh, waiting for your responses, kung hindi naman magawa fully itong O U R H E R O, I want you to choose lamang. Uh, you are to choose only one. Pede, choose one letter and make an acrostic or a statement out of that letter thanking our health heroes. Watching from Pudoran West Central School, Pudoran Albay. Wow, thank you so much. Si Lydia Odenia. Sige I'm waiting for your answers. From Mangahan High School, Marco Antonio Ambaga. Okay. Watching from SDO Cotabato, we have Nona Lupina, okay? Pero mamaya ha, yung kabuuan yan, aking aabangan ng inyong mga kasagutan. Kapag final na nyo lang nagawa, babalikan ninyo kapag natapos na ang mga sessions ng English mamayang hapon. Pero at this moment, I am waiting for your answers. Ito sa lamang na letter, mabigyan natin ng answer for it. So we are looking for an acrostic. Okay. Good afternoon, Paul, from Christy Odefilias Sarigumba. Okay. All right. Terry Ann, thank you so much, too. All right. So I'll be flashing once again my example, huh? And this is my example. Let me read to you this again. Our hero. Oh. On and off duty, you are there. You, understanding the needs of everyone, are, relative or not, serve with heart. H, honorable work to make us proud. E, enthusiasm for the work you have vowed. R, remarkable work to keep Everyone safe. Oh, outstanding job you do for everybody. Ayan. You have there the word vowed, di ba? Under letter E. So, so sa mga hindi nakakalam ng meaning ng vow, it has something to do with your promise. Kung baga, sinumpang tungkulin. Ito mga health heroes natin, they are uh, doing kung ano yung sinumpang tungkulin. And we should be thankful to them. 
Huwag natin silang kumbaga pandirihan, dahil galing sila sa hospital. They are doing their job para maging COVID-free ang ating bansang Pilipinas. And we should be grateful to each and every one. If it happens to see, to, uh, if it happened na makikita nyo sila o makasalubong nyo sila somewhere in your barangay, just a simple thank you will do para kapasalamatan natin sila. Napakalaking bagay nun for them. I guess, yung kanilang pagod, mawawala. Makarinig, lang, makarinig lamang ng mga ganong salita coming from you as a member of the community. Alright? So, nakapag-isip na ba? Christy, Adivillas? Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you so much, ha? Ay ba, nahihiya pa. <laughs> so, later on, I'll be expecting your outputs. I mean, your online outputs. Again, this has something to do with the cross our hero. So, after our sessions on English, you are to write on the comment box your acrostic natin yan. And malay natin, ma-post siya sa ating ed, ed unit Facebook page. Ayan. Sure, matutuwa ang inyong mga teachers, ang inyong mga principals, and most especially, your parents. Very good, guys. So, I guess, I still have time. Okay. I'm still waiting for your answers. Ayan. So, ayan. So, Marco Antonio was able to form a cross-stick. Kahit hindi a poem, sige, I will accept it. Hindi to finish him. Sige. I'm still waiting for it, huh? Later. So, according to Marco Antonio, let me read this. Read this with everyone. Oh, obey. You, understanding, are Responsible, H, honorable, E, uh huh, energetic, R, respect, O, onwards. So, sorry, ah, Marco Antonio, I was able to rephrase or realign your word for it. Pero, I am very appreciative that you was able to form an acrostic. Thank you so much, Marco. For sure, natutuwa ang iyong magulang for answering this activity. Alright? So, again, I'm expecting I took Marco Antonio, I'm expecting your online outputs in the comment section later on after our online session. So, for the meantime, magpapaalam muna po si Tutor Jester, ha? See you next, um, I guess, Next quarter, makikita kita ulit tayo kasi in, sa next week, meron tayong, kumbaga, tinatawag natin yung break. Makakasama nyo muna ay ang mga reading remediation or mga remedy remediation online tutorial classes natin. Okay? Alright. Thank you so much, everyone, especially our learners for being participating, for always being active in every online tutorial na ginagawa natin para sa isa't isa. So this has been Shooter Jester, your English 9 buddy. See you next quarter four, English 9. But tomorrow, magkakasama-sama tayo para sa Filipino form. Goodbye. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating Itulay Tutorial Session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Itulay Free Online Tutorial Session sa Filipino. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Itulay Tutorial Session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit Channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippine Social Media Accounts. Paalam!
Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Cognizant to the needs of our learners, parents, and teachers, the Department of Education provided us with powerful tools for productivity that will allow us to foster critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, communication and collaboration skills to be compassionate, responsible global citizens. Join us and discover new ideas in our series of professional development training program with the ICTS at Tech Unit and Microsoft Education Philippines. Together, we will equip our learners and empower our fellow educators for a dynamic future. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Sulong Edukalidad. Okay, great afternoon everyone. Once again, we're back on this hour. Welcome. This is Tutor Wilma on Itulay of English 10. We're now in quarter two, module eight, entitled Delivered Special Speeches Effectively in Varied Situation. Okay, but before that, let us have first a review. Okay, can you still remember the different multimodals, elements, and types? Okay. May I know this? Uh... Yes. Yes. We have here multimodal text. Then it includes pictures, books, textbooks, graphic, novels, comics, and posters. Then we have the digital multimodal text. Okay, can you still remember? These are such as film, animation, slideshows, e-posters, digital stories, and web pages. And the last one we have the live multimodal text, the dance performance, and the oral storytelling. Okay. Write your answers in the comment box of this 
uh, elements of multi-models. Can you still remember, learners? Okay, so we have here, let us guess or answer what element of multimodal is this one. We have vocabulary, structure, grammar of oral written language. Okay, can, can you still remember what element of multimodal is this? Yes, anybody? Okay, you can type it in your comment box. And this is linguistic. Okay. Next, it is a color, vectors, and viewpoint in steel and moving images. Okay, what is, uh, what element of, is this in a multimodal model text? Okay, write it in your comment box. Yes, it is visual. Next, it is a volume, a pitch, and a rhythm of music and sound effects. What could it be? Okay. Yes, what is it? It is an audio. Okay, next, it is a movement of facial expressions and body language. Yes, it's common to us, especially when you're having a speech. Okay, of which this is our lesson for this afternoon. So this is the gestural. And lastly, it is the proximity, the direction, position of layout, organization of objects in space. Okay. What is it? Okay. It is spatial. Okay. Who got the correct answer? Okay. Congratulations, everyone, to those who got the correct answer. Okay. Let us have our pretest on this uh, lesson for today so let us boost our skills first or let us measure on how far we have gone on our lesson for today okay just write the uh, the the correct letter of your choice answer so we have here number one when the spectators trust the speaker's credibility before he or she starts talking it is called a initial credibility B, derived credibility, C, terminal credibility, and D, outstanding credibility. A, B, C, or D. Okay, write your answer in the comment box. Okay. Okay, we have, yes, it is letter A. It is an initial credibility because of the word starts talking, an initial talking. Okay, number two, we have... Inflections are A, how loud or quiet the speaker is, B, variation in speaker's speech or tone, C, how high or low the communicator's voice is, and letter D, variations in the rate at which a speaker communicates. Okay, A, B, C, or D. I'm trying to fix my phone so that I can read all your comments. Uh, just uh, type the correct answer later. I will just recognize that one. And the answer is letter, yes, letter V. Variation is a speaker speech or tone. Number three, which of the following would not be integrated in doing an outline? A, title, B, purpose, C, main points, and letter, letter D, all of the above would be included. But what could be your answer? Okay, it is letter, just type it in the comment box. Yes, all of the above would be included. Number four, a mathematics teacher is giving a lecture on codes of a famous mathematician's work in a mathematical equation. And this is called A, peer testimony, B, expert testimony. C, strategic organization, and letter D, coating out of context. Okay, what could be your answer? Just type again at the comment box, and later I'll just recognize it. Okay, A, B, C, or D? The answer is letter B, expert testimony. Okay. Next, we have number five. It is speaker who repeatedly utters 
the expressions like an, um, will likely be slated for A, clutter, B, clutch, cliche, by the way. La, letter C, image, image, imagery, then letter D, rhythm. Okay, just type your answer in the comment box. So it could be letter A, clutter. Number six, what is the distinction of an internal preview and a preview statement? So we have your letter A. An internal preview is at the start of the speech and presents the main points of the speech. And a preview statement during the essay and recaps the previous ideas. And letter B, a preview statement is at the start of the speech and presents the main points of the speech. And an internal preview is doing the essay and, re and the previous and recaps the previous points. A previous statement recaps a speech of article and is written by someone other than the author. And an internal preview is a recap of the speech or article and is written by the author. Okay, what could be the answer? Just type A, B, or C. So we have here. Just type it in the comment box. It is letter B. Moving to number seven. Which type of connective is the phrase? Let's now discuss. A, signpost. B, transition. C, internal preview. D, internal summary. Yes, what is it? It is letter Yes, that is transition. Okay, number eight. If a person wishes to con convince the audience to accomplish some, something, he or she would present A. We have here letter A, speech introduction. B, speech of presentation. C, speech to gain ag active agreement. And letter D, speech to gain immediate action. B, C, or D? Okay, the answer is letter D. Okay, move, moving to number nine. A nurse is asked to give a presentation for a grade 10 class about what nurses do for their job. What type of speech will he or she be presenting? A, acceptance speech. B, informative speech. C, speech of introduction. D, commemorative speech. Okay, just type A, B, C, or D. So we have here letter B, informative speech. Okay, number 10. Which of the following is synonymous to credibility? We have here A, dyad, B, ethos, C, logos, letter D, pathos. It's the Good day, this is Teacher Rowan. I'll be your guide in exploring Google Apps for Education, for teaching and learning. In Google for Education, teachers can connect and collaborate easily while staying on task. It gives teachers the freedom to spend more time personalizing the learning experience and less time managing it. Students can learn essential skills such as 21st century problem solving, which they can use it in their future careers. 
As such, the accessibility features will also help and assist every learner to do their best work. Google offers different useful applications that we can use to connect education to technology. This will help our teachers as a 21st century educators to innovate and find ways on how to make teaching and learning more exciting, engaging, effective, and flexible to the demands of the society. Let's re-explore the education experience by discovering new angles to create, collaborate, and communicate as one. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Ang pagkatuto, huwag gawing komplikado. Sulong edukalidad! Cognizant to the needs of our learners, parents, and teachers, the Department of Education provided us with powerful tools for productivity that will allow us to foster critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, communication and collaboration skills to be compassionate, responsible global citizens. Join us and discover new ideas in our series of professional development training program with the ICTS at Tech Unit and Microsoft Education Philippines. Together, we will equip our learners and empower our fellow educators for a dynamic future. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Sulong Edukalidad! Magandang araw! April and Marcus po ang inyong pretty ate sa EdTech Unit. Alam ba ninyo na may webinar o online training session ng EdTech Unit tuwing Sabado? Ang araw na ito ay nakalaan para sa ating mga mahal na kaguruan upang turuan sila ng mga bagong kaalaman at kakayahan sa paggamit ng mga bagong software at applications para sa pinaka-epektibong paraan at lubos mapagkusay ang kanilang paraan ng pagtuturo. This is also our fresher session for our beloved teachers to enhance their skills in technology. Every Saturday, we will conduct webinar sessions for teachers about the use, advantages, and relevance of different blended learning software applications. Ang webinar sharing ito ay magsisimula ng alas 9 ng umaga hanggang alas 12 ng tanghali para sa morning session. Magsisimula naman ng alauna at magtatapos ng alas 4 ng hapon ang afternoon session. You can watch us in our DepEd EdTech Unit Facebook page, Educational Technology Unit YouTube channel, DepEd Tayo and DepEd Philippines. Kita-kits tayo tuwing Sabado! Hello teachers, learners, and parents! Sir Jeff po at your service. Alam nyo ba na meron tayong website na tinatawag na DepEd Commons? Ang DepEd Commons ay binuo upang gawing accessible ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral dito sa ating bansa gamit lamang ang inyong mga smart devices gaya ng cellphones, tablets, at computers. Dito ay maaari nating ma-access ang iba't ibang learning materials mula sa Department of Education. Meron itong mga interactive materials, electronic self-learning modules, at instructional video lessons mula sa DepEd TV na tiyak na makatutulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral galing ka man sa public o private school. Walang problema. Dahil welcome ang lahat dito. Para ito sa mga guro, magulang at mga mag-aaral mula sa kinder hanggang grade 12, alternative learning system o ALS, at pati na rin ang special education. At huwag kang mag-alala dahil kahit walang load ay maaari mong ma-access ang mga learning materials. Tama! Libre ito! Ang kailangan mo lamang gawin ay i-on ang iyong data at buksan lamang ang iyong browser at i-type ang commons.deped.gov.ph. Alam na ba ng iyong mga kasamahang guro o mag-aaral ang tungkol sa DepEd Commons? I-share mo na ang video na ito upang matuto rin sila kung paano gagamitin ang DepEd Commons sa mabilis at napakadaling paraan. Muli, 
Ito po si Sir Jeff at kita-kits po tayo sa DepEd Commons. Paalam! Wala man doon yung magiguan son. Okay. We're back. Okay, let us have first the review. Can you still remember the lesson last week? Okay, so we, there are the so-called multimodal of which Multimodal modal are, are different modes of communication, which uh, have this text that includes picture books, textbooks, graphic novels, comics, and posters. And we have digital multimodal text such as film, animation, slideshows, e-posters, digital stories, and web pages. And the last one is we have the live multi multimodal text that includes dance performance, oral storytelling. Okay. Now, these are the most multimodal elements. Can you still remember what are these? Okay, we have here the vocabulary structure, grammar, or oral written language. Okay, you can type it in our comment box. We have here. The answer is linguistic. Next, it has color, vectors, and viewpoint in still and moving images. So, yes, Niwar Balarmi watching from Bayanihan Elementary School, Tacloban City. Good afternoon. So it is, yes, it's visual. Next, it is a volume, pitch, rhythm of the music and sound effects. Of course, there's a sound, so it must be audio. Number next, movement, facial expression, and body language. Yes, a clue, body language. In your comment box, it is gestural. And the last one, it is proximity, direction, position of layout, organization of object in space. What is it? Okay, type it in the comment box. Okay, Lilibet Salak, good afternoon. It is partial. Okay. Again, we'll have to take, again, our skills booster. Just uh, type the correct letter of your answer. This is to measure on how far you have gone on the next lesson that we're going to tackle. Number one, when the spectators trust the speaker's credibility before he or she starts talking, it is called... Yes, A, initial credibility, B, derived credibility, C, terminal credibility, D, outstanding credibility, A, B, C, or D. Okay, any answer there? Okay, it is A, initial credibility. Number two, oh, so the inflections are... How loud or quiet the speaker is, that is letter E, A, B, variation in speaker speech or tone, C, how high or low the communicator's voice is, and letter D, variations in the rate at which a speaker communicates. So it is letter, letter B, it's gone soon. Number three, which of the following would not be integrated in doing an outline? So have letter A, title, B, purpose, C, main points, D, all of the above would be included. In your comment box, you can have your answer. It is letter D. No more sounds. Number four. A mathematics teacher is giving a lecture on quotes of a famous mathematician's work in a mathematical equation. This is called peer testimony, B, expert testimony, C, strategic organization, D, coating out of context. The answer is letter B. Number five. A speaker who repeatedly utters the expression like an, um, will be like listed for A, clutter, B, cliche, 
C, imagery. D, rhythm. It could be letter A, clutter. Moving to number six. What is the distinction of an internal preview and a preview statement? An internal preview is at the start of the speech and presents the main points of the speech and a preview statement during the essay and recaps the previous ideas. B. A previous statement is at the start of the speech and presents the main points of the speech and an internal preview is during the essay and recaps the previous points. And letter C. A previous statement recaps a speech or article and is written by someone other than the author. And an internal preview is a recap of the speech or an article is written by the author. Okay? A, B, or C. Uh, Melita Alvarez Laurenti watching from Academy Mountain Lupa City. Good afternoon. Okay, the answer is letter A. Okay, try to participate by answering number seven. Which type of connective is this phrase? Let's now discuss A, signpost, B, transition, C, internal preview, and D, internal summary. A, B, or C? The answer is... Letter B. It is a transition. Moving to number eight. If a person wishes to convince the audience to accomplish something, he or she would present A, speech of introduction, B, speech of presentation, C, speech to gain active agreement, and letter D, to gain immediate action. Okay. The answer is... Just write it in a comment box. Lilibet, Salok, Bailongsod, still watching. The answer is letter D, speech to gain immediate action. Number nine. A nurse is asked to give a presentation for a grade 10 class about what nurses do for their job. What type of speech will he or she be presenting? A, acceptance speech. B, informative speech. Letter C, speech of introduction, and letter D, commemorative speech. Okay, A, B, C, or D, just type it in the comment box. The answer is letter B, informative speech, because it's going or she is going to inform. Number 10, which of the following is synonymous to credibility? Okay, we have here A, dyad. B, ethos. C, logos. D, pathos. Okay, A, B, C, or D? Yes, the answer is letter B, ethos. It's all about uh, beliefs. Okay. 11, which audience has substantial amount of knowledge on the subject you are talking about? A, the experts. B, hybrids. C, the managers. D, the lay people. Okay. Again, you are requested to type your answer in the comment box. The answer is letter A, the experts. Next, 12. It involves delivering a speech to the spur at the moment as when someone is requested to say a few words. A, memorized. B, impromptu, C, manuscript, D, extemporaneous. Yes, it is letter B. It is an impromptu speech. Number 13, it is delivering a speech in a conversational manner using notes. This is the style most speeches call for. A, memorized, B, impromptu, C, manuscript. D, extemporaneous. Okay. Your answer is? Yes, it could be manuscript. Number 14. Which is the first step in doing the impromptu? A, stop talking. B, thank the person for the opportunity to speak. Take a minute to gather your ideas and plan the main point you want to present. Letter D, present your speech, say the main idea briefly with adequate emphasis, 
and at a pace your listeners can go along. Okay. Answer is letter C. Take a minute to gather your ideas and plan the main point you want to present. Yes, that is the first step in doing the impromptu speech. Number 15. Which of the following would not be included in the components of an introductory speech? So, it is letter A. Is it letter A? Introduce the speaker's topic. Letter B, provide a brief background on the speaker. And letter C, request from the audience to warmly welcome the speaker. And letter D, deliver the speech emphasizing on the main point of the speaker. Okay, this is the last question before we will be moving to our lesson. The answer is deliver the speech emphasizing on the main point of the speaker. Okay. How's your answers? Okay. Rosemary Obina watching from Rangiban Elementary School. Good afternoon. Okay. Here's our objective. Deliver special speeches like toast and roast speeches, tribute speeches to introduce guest speakers, resource persons, etc. Effectively in varied speech situations. Okay. Now, class uh, learners, these are the types of special occasion speeches. We have here the eulogy. Do you know about eulogy? Introductory, toast, roast, presentational speech, acceptance speech, keynote address, tribute and commemorative speech, and after dinner speech. I will uh, tackle this one by one. Okay. Now, we have here the type and components of special occasion speeches. So we have here the eulogy. The components of this are the following. It provides a brief background of the departed. It includes anecdotes and memories together with the departed. Then briefly introduces oneself and your relationship of the departed. Okay. The suggested time is three to four minutes. Kasi baka maubusan ng luha ang mga nag -a attend So, of course, we have here our example. Okay, I'll read to you. Dearest mother, I feel honored and privileged to have been your daughter. You always loved me unconditionally and were the best mother anyone could wish for. I will miss you forever. Pero yung mama ko, buhay pa yung mama ko ha. Oh, he's, he's just celebrating her birthday last February 10. So this is only an example of a eulogy. Okay. Speech. So another example, okay. So. Those of me, a dearest friend, a surrogate daughter, and a confidant feel a deep sense of loss in doing this eulogy. It seems so with Dr. and Ali. a colleague in the English department and turned into my bosom body. She breathed a decent and modest existence. In her 100 years, she was best recognized for her sense of humor. So those are some examples of eulogy. Okay, the next uh, type, we have the introductory speech. It provides a brief background, the main speaker introduces the speaker's topic and invites the audience to warmly welcome the speaker. And this is done in less than two minutes. Okay, here, the example. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our speaker of the hour is an accomplished butcher, a skilled sculptor, interior designer, and all-around good father of two, and a husband of one. Recently, he bested the 2020 interior designing competition in Paris among 23 competitors from all over the world in creating furniture from biodegradable materials. Without further ado, here's Mr. Dick Dexter Ose. Let's accord him a round of applause. Okay, Beth Gavino Sikuya. Okay, 
Those, that, that was an example of introductory speech. Moving on to the type toast. Okay. It prepares a heartwarming brief statement for the celebration. And it considers that all glasses are filled and ready to toast. Gathers everyone around before making the toast. Okay, this is the sample uh, tips or useful tips on how to write a toast speech. This is done in 30 to 60 seconds, one minute only. Sample. Come on, guys. Lift your glasses to Carla and Carlo. May you have marvelous together years together. Just keep in mind, Carlo, to have a happy life always make Carla happy. Everyone, let us give them a toast of happiness for both of them. Clap, clap, clap. Okay, so that is a sample toast speech. Okay, moving on to the roast. Honors a person in a humorous way. Contains Comedic insult and criticism. This is done in three to four minutes. Okay. These are just an excerpt of an example. Rose spear, speech. Carry on, Brian. Okay. Sample. I'm up here at this moment to honor Brian for all the efforts he's exerted for this organization. Now, I'm not telling he's a chatterbox. box. But we're the only company in this area that had to utilize lecture rooms as an alternative of conference spaces. Brian used to talk about his pig for the first half hour of the meeting, then we'll say adjourn. Okay, this, as what I have said, this is only an excerpt on a roast speech. Okay, moving on to the presentational speech. The components of this, it highlights the merit of the recipient and points out the purpose and the importance of the presentation. And this is done less three minutes. Okay. Sample. Presentation. Uh, presentational speech. Okay. Our ensuing outstanding investigatory project award, which goes to the student who has designed the most essential invention in the community using biodegradable materials. The receiver of this award absolutely earns this honor because he invented something that may benefit others in the society. Hence, I proudly present this year's Outstanding Investigatory Project Award to Sok L. Ever. Okay, so this is an example of presentational speech is uh, presenting the the award the outstanding investigatory project award and of course we have the acceptance speech we have here letter a of the component it expresses sincere appreciation or utmost surprise if unexpected okay Recognizes those who made the award possible. Then cites how will the award make a change in the future. Then letter D expresses thanks in the end. Uh, have you noticed, especially on the binibining uh, universe, uh, if it, it is uh, unexpected and the, accept, the, uh, the acceptance speech there contains uh, thanksgiving, yan. So this is done three to five minutes. Okay. So we have here a sample of the acceptance speech. Thank you very much for bestowing me with the Outstanding Investigatory Project Award. I would like to acknowledge the efforts of the assessment agency of the Department of Science and Technology for choosing my project and my mentors who never failed to encourage and to help in this project. Okay. As we notice. The awardee is extending her or his uh, thank, uh, what is this, uh, thankfulness or gratefulness to the Department of Science and Technology. Okay, next, the keynote address. It summarizes the central message revolving around equations such as 
We have here conventional speech, commencement speech, and letter B, it touches aspect that contribute to a good life. Yes, this is the, the highest one. It is made on maximum of 10 minutes, 10 up minutes. Okay, sample. Uh, this is only an excerpt. Good day, all the women and men in this hall. I would like to say my gratitude to the one who invited me since this moment gives me a rare opportunity to share my insights on women empowerment. Thank you, Miss Nifty Hip. As we all know, we have congregated here to celebrate the contribution of women as entrepreneurs. I am more than blessed to give a message on this special occasion for the business world. So this is only an example of a keynote address, excerpt only. Next, type, tribute and commemorative speeches. Reflect a short, eloquent information about a person, event, monument, idea, or uh, idea. Then convey appropriate feelings to the audience, which warrants attention and emotion on the occasion. And this is done five to seven minutes. Okay, sample. Dragon of my life. Mind you, ladies and gentlemen, most people consider her dragon, but I consider her, her as my friend, my mom, and my teacher. I simply call her Lola Toting. Her stern personality trained me to stand for the right and to fight for fairness. She has imparted many words lesson, wonderful lesson in life, which molded me to who I am now. Lola Toting has been there when my parents separated. She has been with me through the abyss of my childhood experiences. She has been there when I confronted nuisance in school since third grade. Of course, her presence has been visible during my teenage chaotic years. Without her, I most likely would have gone zany. Okay, so this is an example of tribute speech of which is written by Beth Sequoia. Okay, good afternoon, Miss Rosemary Obina. Oh, from Rangiban Elementary School, Dante June Orasmo. Good afternoon. Moving on to the after dinner speech. The components of this are the following. It entertains audience on one or more issues and informs audience about one or more issues. This is done in three to four minutes. Okay, sample after dinner speech. Okay, catalyst nights. All of us have experienced the scenario inside the classroom and cries, eyes on the board. At this moment, nevertheless, the energies of the chalk will have to be on the table because the teachers are surely not here to write our thoughts, but to switch them to relax and to chill. Okay, so those are the uh, special speeches on varied situation or occasions, by the way. So again, we have, what is it? Eulogy, uh, uh, presentational speech, toast, roast, acceptance, then introductory. Then we have the dinners after dinner speech, and we have the keynote address okay let us now have the activity now feel what you feel what is proper so you will be writing your answer on the blank of which you think of which what uh, which you feel what is proper to be filled in on this blank okay are you now set Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is the great humbleness and honor to present their certificate of perfect attendance to blank for completing the school year without absences. She showed his or her blank among her classmates and congratulations. Okay, can you fill it up? Just write it in a comment box. Miss Sean Kaji Bideko, good afternoon. 
Okay, let us try to reveal. Okay, siempre, of course, you will be filling it with the name of a person. Like, for example, this one. Okay, we have there Miss Marklin Duma. Okay, good, uh, good afternoon, Ma Marklin. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great humbleness and honor to present the certificate of perfect attendance to Miss Marklin Duma for completing the school year without absences. She showed his or her, what could it be? Yes, performance or attendance among her classmates. Okay. Number two. Uh, by the way, excuse me, this is what speech? This could be a presentational speech. Okay. Number two. To the Natural Resources Board of Directors, I'm grateful to receive this plaque of nature's valor. This endeavor to save the environment is not only for ourselves, but for the blank. And I hope that blank and I thank you. Okay, what could be the proper words or the appropriate words to fill in the blanks? Okay, you can comment on the comment box. Dante John Erasmo, good afternoon. Okay, this could be our answer. Okay, this endeavor to save the environment is not only for ourselves, but for the whole creators of Mother Earth and Universe. I hope that we will be able to sustain this endeavor. Thank you. What could be this type of a speech? Anybody? Okay, this can also be a presentational speech. This is presenting the pluck of nature's valor. Number three, to the bride and groom, let us blank. Today is the best occasion of your life. Indeed, this is a new chapter, a new challenge of blank. Okay, you can uh, chat or write it in your comment box. Okay, what could be the appropriate uh, words that could be filled in in the blanks? Okay, it could be to the bride and groom. Let us toast and welcome them to the world of togetherness as husband and wife. Today is the best occasion of your life. And indeed, this is a new chapter, a new challenge that life will offer. Okay. Last one. We have number four. Life is unpredictable. Okay. By the way, uh, number three is a sample of toast speech. Okay. Number four. Life is unpredictable. Life is limited. One needs to make the most of it by doing good and making legacies for others. Passing by through death is normal. All of us blank. And when the time comes, we blank. Now it is sudden and lonesome to say goodbye to blank. And then his death leaves an emptiness in our hearts. But blank, his name will always be remembered. Okay. This could be an example of what speech? Okay. This could be an example of a eulogy. Okay. Let us answer. All of us will lead to this journey. And when the time comes, we will join in the hands of our great creator. Now it is sudden and lonesome to say goodbye to... This is just an example of Professor Rodi Gasera. Then his death leaves an emptiness in our hearts, but joy for his soul because he is now in his hands. His name will always be remembered. Okay, as what I have said, this is an example of eulogy. Okay, now prepare yourself and let us have the activity number three. You will be choosing the letter, the best answer, uh, write in your notebook or uh, comment in the comment box. And let us have number one. Okay. Which is not a component of eulogy? A. Provides a brief background on the departed. B. Provides a brief background on the guest speaker. 
C includes anecdotes and memories together departed. And letter D introduces oneself and your relationship of the departed. Okay, comment. Okay, may I see who is having the comment here? Okay, the answer is letter. Okay, it is letter B. Because A, C, and D are a component of eulogy. And it is only letter B there that is, uh, ano ba yung eulogy? And then this, this, you will be giving a brief background of this speaker. There is, an, there is no guest speaker in a eulogy. Oh my God. Okay, number two. Which is an aspect of a convention speech based upon the industry, profession, and fandom? Letter B, prepares heartwarming brief statement for the celebration. Letter C, includes anecdotes, memories together with the departed. And letter D, express sincere appreciation or utmost surprise. Okay. A, B, C, or D. Okay. So Arlene Bautista is answering letter, letter B. Let us try to reveal. Oh, it is letter A. Yes, letter A, a convention speech. Number three, which is a component of an acceptance speech? A, touches aspects that contribute to a good life. Letter B, expresses sincere appreciation, utmost surprise, if unexpected. And letter uh, C, briefly introduces oneself and your relationship with the departed. And letter B, convey appropriate feelings to the audience which warrants attention and emotion on the occasion. Okay, A, B, or C. Jester Pagkaliwagan, good afternoon. Okay, the answer is letter B. It is a, an, a component of acceptance speech. Expresses sincere appreciation at most surprise if unexpected. Yes, that is uh, that is being discussed a while ago. Number four, which is not a component of an after dinner speech. A entertains audience on one or more issues. B informs audience about one or more issues. Touches aspects that contributes to a good life. Letter D has a suggested render time of three to four minutes. Okay. Uh, Miss Carissa May Ibanez is answering letter B. Let us try to reveal. Okay. The answer is, oh, it touches aspects that contribute to a good life. It is not a component of after dinner speech. Okay. One more try, Miss Carissa. Number five, which a component, which is a component of the presentational speech? A, highlights the merit of the recipient. B, recognizes those who made the award possible. Cites, how will the award make a change in the future? And letter D, expresses sincere appreciation or utmost surprise, if unexpected. Okay, try to comment in the comment box. Yes, let us reveal the answer. It is letter A. It highlights the merit of the recipient because letter B, C, and D, those are the components of the presentational speech. Okay, moving to number six. Which is not an aspect of the tribute and commemorative speeches? Letter A, express thanks in the end. Letter B, highlight the speech within five to seven minutes. Letter C, reflect short and eloquent information about a person, event, monument, idea. Then letter D, convey appropriate feelings to the audience which warrants attention and emotion on the occasion. Okay. Let us try, Quiza. What's your answer? Jester, Arlene, Sean, and many more. Good afternoon, sa lahat. The answer is letter A. Express thanks in the end. 
It is not an aspect of tribute and commemorative speech. Number seven. It is the act of presenting or delivering a speech without using notes. A. Memorize speech. B. Impromptu speech. C. Manuscript speech. Letter D. Extemporaneous speech. Okay. A, B, C, or D. Okay. It is letter B. It is an impromptu speech. Okay. Number eight, it is when the speaker delivers without any prior preparation in the topic, for this simply means doing something without preparation. Okay, so we have here letter A, memorize speech. Letter B, impromptu speech. Letter C, manuscript speech. Letter D, extemporaneous speech. Okay. Arlene Bautista is answering. Let us try to see if your answer is right. The answer is, yes, it is a manuscript. Okay. Number nine. This involves reading a speech verbat verbatim. It is typically used when there is a time constraint or the speech will be telecast. So a copy of the speech is essential. So, A, memorize speech, B, impromptu speech, C, manuscript speech, and letter D, extemporaneous speech. Okay? You can type your comment or answer in, your, in the comment box. So, it is letter D. It is an extemporaneous speech. Okay, number it is previously planned, but delivered with assist assistance of few or no notes or cue cards containing the outline of the speech. A, memorized speech. B, impromptu speech. C, manuscript speech. And letter D, extemporaneous speech. Okay, just type in the comment box, A, B, C, or D. The answer is... Letter D. Okay, it is an extemporaneous speech. Okay, so you had now learned about the uh, special speeches on varied occasions. And now, congratulations, everyone. Now that you have learned and how to let deliver special speeches in varied situations, it's your turn now to make your own and present it next episode. Just send it to wilmamalakasti at gmail.com to be acknowledged and to be presented next episode. See you next, same time, same place, same program. Itulay para sa lahat, para sa kinabukasan. This is Tutor Wilma saying, Happy learning, everyone. See you. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Ito Live free online tutorial session sa Filipino. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Ito Live tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippine social media accounts. Paalam!